hoping that the shared information will be for the intent and purpose of uh, clarity and uh, public information and should not be used for any other purpose. Any request for a copy will be only allowed through Metro CDO uh, Oral Chamber of Commerce and myself. Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Annabel Abuzo. I'm here to present to you for Metro CDO Transport and Traffic Forum, my topic, which is entitled Pagayan the RCP, Transportation and Built Environment Landscape. So this is an aerial view of our city of Cagayan and has cities, our city is really horizontally and vertically advancing in terms of development. But I'm happy to note with you that our environment is still a healthy, livable city. And this is also the landscape of downtown Cagayan or our city proper, the Visoria area. Happy to note also that uh, development in our city are well established and dispersed over the landscape of uh, the original barangay or the the population area from Barangay 1 to Barangay 4. So I would like to stress my first discussion on the geographic and demog demographic profiles of our city, in um, intending to answer the question, what is city environment and landscape, and what is our current urban developments? From time to time, I may speak in this area, so I'd like to ask your permission for me to discuss so. So this is Cagayan Biora City within the region of uh, Region 10, and we are part or member of Visamis Oriental as a province. Our city lies in northern Mindanao, and we comprise about an area of 412.8 square kilo, square kilometer distance, or sorry, that's kilometer distance, and we comprise District 1 and District 2, which is subdivided by the river of Cagayan Biora. Uh, in District 1, we have 24 barangays. In District 2, we have 56 barangays. And the urban area comprises 57 barangays with 23 rural areas. The city development started in the yellow, yellow circle here, presented originally as downtown Poblacion from Barangay 1 to 40, and the main barangays of Carmen, Pasan, and Makansali. That was then before, in nine, uh, way back in 1980s. And then, of course, we know that we have developed the red line in Ulua, as well as the area in Gusa, Kugman, and uh, 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 Bugo area. And then we have also development in Punto in 1990s. And so, therefore, at this point in time, 1920s, um, 2020s, we are already horizontally expanding as an urban area in terms of our landscape. Our then mayor now, I'm sorry, our current mayor, uh, Mayor and Honorable Mayor Oscar Moreno uh, created the vision for Cagayan BRS that in the development of the Comprehensive Development Plan CDP, and he mentioned it too, or for our city, that our city is a strategic and prime development hub of the South, a city managed through good governance with an empowered citizenry that thrives in a highly competitive economy and a sustainable environment that nurtures it, its diversity and multicultural heritage toward a resilient, progressing, and inclusive future. And so therefore, we have eight frameworks in our prime hat. This includes peace and order, poverty, revenue, generation. And to name a few of our discussion today is the infrastructure and investment, teamwork, traffic, and tourism. Our city is only around 412 square kilometer with a density of 1,800. When we had a census in 2020, we have, uh, we have increased from 2050 to about 58,000 or 50,000 because of we are now currently at 728,402. And notice the landscape in the area is an urban sprawl it extended from the, the boundary of Bogo and uh, a pool area, as well as Puntod, Makabalan, and the uh, hinterland in, or our uphill area in Lumbia. So landscape-wise, our population density is concentrated on the red uh, uh, red colored areas in the map of Cagayan de Or. And so population also, we noticed that from 20, 2000 to 2020, 2020, uh, 2015, we have increased our um, population by growth rate. But unfortunately, in 2020, we have decreased this. We are now only at 1.48 growth rate, and this is attributed 
possibly to COVID-19 pandemic situation in 2020 and affected by mortalities. If you also look at the upper portion of the graph here, we have profi uh, profiled the poverty line in our city based on the Wikipedia information we have here um, increasing uh, decreased sorry decreased growth uh, decreased line in 2012 to 2015 and that is actually sustained until 2018 because uh, we have developed our city to become an advancing metropolis however we are still looking at this trend because poverty line corresponds with metropolization as urban city becomes denser with people, our need for a workforce and sustainable development has to be attained. And also, I'd like to take note uh, with everyone that uh, our city have increased uh, barangays with uh, increased population. So we have the top three is Carmen, Balulang, and Kaoswaga. This is followed after by some uh, eight areas of barangays which have increased in population because of density as well. However, there are already cities, uh, sorry, barangay areas in our cities, especially in the downtown area, which are uh, uh, diminishing by number. And I'm sorry to say this is also because the landscape in the population area has become a commercial, commercial area already and no longer residential area. So this includes barangay 39, which only has about 17 population up until barangay 8, which has about 90 population for uh, in the case of voters' numbers during election. That's one thing to look at when we look at the landscape of our economy and our development in the downtown area. Um, Industry-wise, our commerce expanded in the uh, eastern and western side of Cagayan with developments in relation to uh, industries and, uh, trade and trade and logistics. I'm happy to share to you that we still have the green areas in the uptown and some portions which are related to our nearby um, municipality of Bukinon, which is actually uh, almost our neighbor in the uptown and in the eastern side of Cagayan de Oro. This is the lands of our commerce and trade and commerce and industry in Cagayan. And of course, uh, the major industries along the eastern and western side development of companies. Um, NEDA already highlighted with respect to Philippine Statistics Authority that our city will become Metro Cagayan de Oro 2025 and we will become fourth uh, regional center as well as a metropolitan center of the country uh, after Davao. And so this is something to look at when we project uh, economic development alongside uh, our sustainable development. And NEDA already highlighted as well that as a port the Palatan Center, we become the gateway for a transit shipment hub and educational center of the country. Our potential industry is not just uh, industrial and commerce, as well as trade and logistics, but also potentials for agriculture. Um, in terms of the idea of metropolization, uh, the landscape of Metro Cagayan de Oro will comprise the urban city of Cagayan de Oro and El Salvador and 14 municipalities, uh, five on the east side and nine on the west side. This will include Balingasag, Claveria, Hasagulwan, Villanueva, Alubihid, Gitagong, Initao, Lagundingan, Libertad, Lugait, Mantikaw, Naawan, and Opol. And if you look at the numbers, we can see that Cagayan is already third in terms of population and rank. Uh, we are even part of Misamis Oriental, which is already the second highest uh, uh, population center. And so if we look at it by landscape in the land area of Misamis Oriental, uh, we are looking at 4 million square kilometer area with a density of about 9,895. That's times nine of our current density in Cagayan. If we look at metropolization, population wise about 1.6 million, that's times almost twice our 780 number right now. Okay, so let's look at our transportation profiles and mobility initiatives. Uh, we'll try to answer what's in the landscape of our transportation and built environment and what are our milestones and what have been done so far. So we'll start off with the idea that our modes in the city in terms of transportations are really public transport, mainly bus, jeepney taxis, and multi-cab, 
And within the city center and small barangays, we have motorellas, pedicatris, tricycads, and we have right now baon baon or the bajay. We also have private vehicles, namely cars, pickups, vans, SUVs, buses, small buses rather, or private buses, trucks, and motorcycles. In terms of motorization and travel demand, which will be represented as well by Ma'am Avalin later on, our city of Cagayan has about uh, data of about 246,000 uh, volume of vehicles in 2018. Now it's 2022, so I'm assuming LTO has a more increased number in terms of uh, populations for vehicles. But um, in 2018, the profile showed that our increased number in terms of registration is basically our private motorcycles or tricycles. And then, of course, it's followed by our jeepney, which is this part, which is 20%, and the smaller blue area, which is 5% on logistics, logistics being trucks and trailers. So these are the top three vehicles registration then in 2018. And in terms of the demand for transportation of our household for individual household in a barangay, um, the greater demand of people requires public transport for 54% and then followed by active transport, that's walking and biking of 29% and private transport at 17%. Overall, our total trips per day is about 1.2 million. That's almost equivalent, uh, that's almost uh, relative to Manila, which is 12.8 million per trip. So it's about 10% um, of Manila on a daily basis. Okay, so in terms of, uh, sorry, sorry. Okay. So in terms of trend, we, have, we are looking at comparison between national and regional increase and in motorization. Um, the national increased motorization in 2015 was found to be 8 billion. And for regional, like Misamis Oriental, about 278,000. And for that matter, if we look at the numbers, uh, the region in 2015 of 1.56 million has about uh, need for motorization for, it, for, for that number at 278. So therefore, Authorization for 1,000 people would mean we have about 100 need 178 vehicles needed by every 1,000 person in terms of registration. For the greater infrastructure of our city, we noted that in GIZ project and Pi Asia with Cagayan uh, de Oro or local government and uh, universities who helped us, we accounted about 352 road classification by type in the city. Uh, that's in 2015. And the more recent data include infrastructure such as the green one, which are bridges in Cagayan, the old bridges we have in Puntod, in Marcos Bridge, Isalina, uh, Rotonda, and uh, Taguanao, and the pink one in uh, the newer ones, which are in extension of Borja and the one in Pibasak area. We also highlighted um, development in the area of flyovers in Bogo, uh, in Gaisano area, and Carmen area. The then study in 1998, which is the oldest initiative being done for the city, was handled by USAID, I'm sorry, Australian OSAID and ABB, which is uh, developed with PRMDP of Meta. These are actually um, transportation related, and they crafted this design for or the scope of the work is designed for red, uh, road network study, passenger occupancy, uh, public transport route study, institutional development, parking study, and setting capacity building. So in that, at that time, they had already developed the PUJ route for 13 vehicles only, or 13 routes only. Um, currently, we are looking at uh, the Metro Cagayan Sustainable uh, Infrastructure Development, or SUID, that is developed by NEDA for Metro Cagayan de Oro. That again includes our municipalities and neighbors in the region as well as the, our counter, our neighbor city, the Salvador area. This is part of the Philippine Development Plan for 2017 to 2022. And this is also part of the key development zones in strategic development for Area 1 
in the study of NEDA for Metro Cagayan. We are also part of the national uh, plan for the proposed Mindanao Railway System that was developed by our current president. And we are looking also the development of priority economic corridors, the BIMP Iaga region for the growth in the region of Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Philippines. As we are part of the national government, we also consider them in our greater understanding of how we will project future development for Metro Cagayan de Oro. And also, with uh, some initiatives being done in helping our city, we have um, so we've been supporting our effort for the UNBP and the ALG in paving the roads for good governance through road infrastructure development, planning, expenditure, and budgeting. And this is already being done for our neighbors in Misamis Oriental and um, some universities in our city helping out, training some of our uh, workforce in the engineering uh, province, provincial engineering department, as well as the city for roads to SDGs. Um, in terms of uh, the plan for the DOPR and the LTFRB objective modernization program, we've been developing our transportation route plan with uh, our city RPA. And uh, we have already been into the fourth revision now. We just have to sit down with them next week to discuss some minor details that has to be addressed in order for our LPTRP plan or GP modernization plan to be approved by the OPR and our region LPFRB. Um, uh, we are looking at the change of modernization in order for us to, to at least uh, be addressing issues in terms of the jeepney uh, deterioration and emission issues as well as in support for the need for the greater public uh, mobility in terms of tran public transport. In terms of the need for uh, the cleaning up area, uh, the national mandate of the uh, the national mandate of our president and the ALG for sidewalk reclamation, we were able to uh, handle at least 2019. If I'm not wrong, we have started with the cleaning up air cleaning up of our sidewalk in order for us to have more uh, area for our uh, pedestrian traffic flow in the city um, we've been doing this with the local government GDP. offices in our city and we are also addre addressing this through our uh, governance and our legal application for the local government of Cagayan de Oro um, in 2015 we, we, we were able to uh, involve ourselves with emission inventory for, for water air quality in our city. We are supported by Kai Asia and GIZ with USAID. USAID handled the greenhouse gas emission inventory and uh, GIZ helped us with uh, the inventories of um, motor vehicles, uh, household and industrial uh, pollution. And for that matter, we will be able to check that our motorization have compromised our air quality in the area. And therefore, uh, Metro Cagayan Airshed Governing Board in the DMR, EMB, um, look at, looks at with Cagayan in terms of how we manage our air quality because we are sharing information with our city and our neighboring municipalities in terms of handling air quality. Um, in terms of um, development for our city for shelter, um, Cagayan de Oro was able to um, produce a number of projects in relation to uh, socialized housing for our uh, marginalized members of our community. With the help of UN Habitat and um, our city, we were able to at least do groundbreaking uh, projects in the projects in Balula, Balubal, a city socialized housing project and for the employees of the city and the Pagatpat Valley residents. Um, a lot of development has been done, of course, for education, but this is one for shelter. And with shelter, we correspond with mobility as for transportation and um, trade and commerce of our community. We also were able to work with and 
have the support of so, uh, Sustainable Mobility Project under SMP for Philippine business, uh, the Philippine business and for the environment sector. And we also were able to have access with support from GIZ and ECLE in terms of um, urban mobility challenge and uh, livable cities application. Um, Kagayan also initiated uh, for livable environment application. We initiated clean up our dump site in the in the, in the landfill area uh, in Carmen. I'm sorry, the dump site in uh, Carmen area, and we were able to convert it as an eco park with the support of our local government mayor and our members of our community. We also manage waste management, and for that we also uh, were able to. Uh, gear up our project for the, the improvement of downtown um, Divisoria, which is uh, developed through the support of USTP architects and uh, organizations of architects in our city. Uh, they crafted the Dunhao Park project to improve the Plaza Divisoria and some portions of our uh, um, esplanade in the uh, in Carmen Cagayan River uh, setting. In terms of transportation master plan and transportation management board, in 2018, we crafted uh, the two uh, items, TMP and TMD, with the invitation that we'll try to look at transportation and the situation of traffic in Cagayan de Oro. And for that, we were able to lodge TMP, which was already submitted to the council for approval. Um, we are just waiting for confirmation. Uh, we finished last December 2021, and currently it's lodged by our uh, the office of the RTA for the City Council. We also have PMB who's working with us uh, through the efforts of Engineer Avalin Kalugan and the local government to um, advance the PMP plan and address issues in terms of traffic concerns with the PMB. Um, with this, uh, we can safely assure that our development, economic development, sustainable development is also, or corresponds also with transportation mobility uh, scenarios and, uh, how to say, scenarios and uh, management. WH, uh, we created the uh, task force for active mobility in relation to COVID-19 pandemic situation and protocol. So this is in relation to the BO88 order of um, DPWH to make, to ensure that uh, sidewalks and bicycle lanes are put in place in our national highways. Corresponding to that, the local government through the ILG was mandated to create uh, two, two inventories in terms of active transport mobility by sidewalk infrastructure and by, by uh, bicycling applications. So these are the different propo proposals that we've made. This is also uh, corresponds also with the transportation master plan with additional um, plans made just for the COVID-19 situation in 2020. And of course, we I'd like to also stress that the DPWH bike lanes of about 49 kilometers was also lodged by DPWH with respect to their new projects for uh, highway application. Uh, this is an example of our bicycle lane, the pilot area, which we have lodged last year. Uh, this runs from the Rotonda area or on the circle to the junction in Veles uh, Highway Masters, uh, I'm sorry, Veles CM area. Um, with our initiative also in the academe, uh, I'm happy to say Save University was able to promote some research applications in terms of sustainable uh, transport. So we had total about 44 numbers of researches being done in various areas. The pink ones are in relation to social application. The green ones are in relation to environment application. And uh, ones in uh, red or maroon, color are uh, of 36 percent of economic application. So sustainability wise, we, I, we are gearing ensure that we balance out social, environmental, economic applications in terms of transportation and traffic engineering. 
with um, Civil University Engineering Resource Center, I'm proud to stay serving as director right now. I'm, I'm able to help out in terms of um, education for transport and build environment. Currently, we have women in transportation leadership supported by Australian government. We also have um, transportation simulation and disaster application with the support of East IRG number 38, uh, funded rather by East through the IRG number 38. And happy to see in, uh, Dr. Alexis of La Salle University. Dr. Alexis Filioni is with us now here. And uh, sir, I'm happy to highlight this one. With their support, we're able to research on flood route application for Korea VR. We are continuing that research with other ASEAN countries which encounters so we'll, try, we'll do our best to forward our concern in Kagaya. Also with our um, uh, con a memorandum of uh, agreement with uh, CP of Kagayan de Oro, we have transportation engineering environment research. We're happy to be granted on the ERC softwares uh, through the support of the city of Kagayan and the RPA. Uh, we were able to do research in flood droughts and disaster application. Right now, we are working on disaster that's related to um, earthquakes and flood in the city so that we can at least mitigate uh, traffic flow when it comes to disaster disaster scenarios. This will help our city, the RRMO, in planning up with the RTA traffic routes when there are disasters. Others, we were able to work right now with UP and CTS, Intelligent Transportation System. We're currently working on a contract for Mike Mac simulation software. Um, they will help us develop our plans for traffic flow. Uh, we have also UNBP, as I mentioned a while ago, and Thai Asia. We also have Metro Governing Board uh, with our air quality. And we have PIA for residential development or traffic impact assessment for any development in our city. So what are the challenges opportunities ahead? So what are we facing and what can we possibly do? I'd like to highlight that with climate change, and we have a concerns on environmental hazards, be it for flood, uh, rain-induced floods, uh, storm surge, ground shaking, seismic liquefaction, or to induce landslide. Liquefaction, we have, according to Dr. Apoor, um, we have some areas in Pasan, which are actually subsiding. So we have lift, lift, liquefaction issues in that area. One of the areas with lift, lift, liquefaction issues. Um, so our, um, our city now are looking at key areas of development challenges. We are looking at priorities and uh, areas of key items are BRRM related and climate change action plan, urban mobility related, uh, urban planning related and urban economic and financing related. We'd also like to highlight that with Metro Cagayan de Oro, the challenges and opportunities and strategies has to be addressed because we are becoming a big metropolitan center. A lot were done last year, especially for um, some webinars being done with the mayor and the business sector in terms of metropolization. We hope to plan for future um, so that we will be ready as a city and as a metropolis. Uh, we know also that uh, with pandemic scenarios in the national level, in the local level, we have COVID-19 pandemic issues, the rising trend and the uh, downtrend and rising trend of the pandemic affected our economy, affected a lot of things in our city. And we are not the only ones in the Philippines. We are also uh, the same with our ASEAN neighbors. And for Cagayan de Oro, we experience a lot of change in terms of protocol and a lot of change in terms of how we handle the situation locally. And with that, we also know that a lot of mobility challenges will be made or a lot of mobility uh, shifting have been made. A lot of people did not ride the, tran the public transport. Some of them ride their own private car. A lot of them stayed home. A lot of uh, activities were hampered and so therefore mobility are being also compromised. So with that, uh, we also look at how we can manage our pandemic and transport mobility issue in line with our uh, concern for the marginalized group and for special groups, especially women, children, the elderly, 
the PWDs and the LGBTQ community. We look at active transport, walking and biking as an opportunity during pandemic. But how to go about it is a challenge as well as an opportunity. Look at, look at also transportation and traffic management. We have a worsening traffic in our city, but we also look at the development that is the prime reason for this uh, scenarios. And because there's no national copying of transportation uh, registration, we are increasing our transport registration in the LPO. And we are also concerned with congestion. We hope that with this challenge, we can look at opportunities to do traffic management and transportation management. Uh, we also look at uh, public transport management. We do not want to highlight on the private transport because we have areas for development of roads and highways. So we look at public transport as an opportunity. Um, EMP also uh, discuss some infrastructure development that will be discussed later on by Ma'am Aveline. And hopefully with public transport, uh, we can increase the mobility of our people without compromising congestion and traffic flow. We look at also development in terms of tourism and logistics. We're not just talking about road, we're talking about trade and commerce and logistics opportunity for our uh, greater business se sector. As we have already placed a put in place a uh, uh, coastal road, up on highways and in some areas assigned for specific vehicles, not only for the land side, but also the air and water side. We look at opportunities for commerce without compromised uh, development of our engineering applications. Uh, we also look at accidents and road safety. Road safety management is necessary as we um, develop our city to become a metropolis because mobility-wise, our concern is transportation and access of people. We do not want to uh, compromise uh, safety uh, or any accidents or crime related issues in relation to our transportation environment. Um, we highlight on pedestrian because pedestrian is our primary, primary client and con or user of the road. So we hope that we can address at least services in relation to pedestrian access and flow. We look at also facilities for them when they walk or when they bike, not just because they're riding a vehicle. We walk, be it for walking and biking or active transport, we hope that with or without pandemic, we can at least promote their mobility through active uh, infrastructure. So opportunities then to consider in the greater context is relation to balance, mobility, connectivity, resiliency, and sustainability. I hope that this presentation at least profoundly uh, present to you the landscape of our situation of traffic and transportation environment in Europe. Thank you. Thank you, Doc Annabel. This time to talk about the Cavendior Master Plan. May we call on Engineer Avalin Kaulugan. Good afternoon, Ma'am Avalin. Good afternoon, uh, Ms. Aryan. Okay, the slides are up already. Thank you. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. I will be presenting the transport master plan of Cagayan de Oro City. Well, Cagayan de Oro City is experiencing consistent economic growth rate. It is also faced with issues and challenges, among which is the current transportation situation of the city. It was already presented by Doc Annabel a while ago. The rapid economic and population growth brought about traffic congestion, inadequate public transport, parking problem, pedestrian safety, to name a few. This is exacerbated by the sparse transportation infrastructure and deficient digital connections. The city recognized the urgent need to improve the traffic situation in the short term and to cope up with the increasing traffic volume in the long term. Hence, Cagayan de Oro Master Plan team was formed to craft the Transport Master Plan of CDO. The team conducted traffic surveys such as the household interview survey or what we call the HIS, Gordon line surveys, screen line surveys, and the road uh, interview survey. Next slide.
The team came up with the following results. I would like to I would like to specify that the basic uh, data that we need for any transportation study comes from the people itself. Hence, we did the household interview survey and based on the trip that is being conducted daily by Kagay Anon, we came up with this uh, pie. So this is for all modes. Walk and bike is 29%. Chipney, 27%. CCAD is 10.5%, Motorella, uh, Motorella is 10.5%, while the CCAD is 11.4%, motorcycle 14%, and the rest are breakdown into others, truck, bus, car, taxi, van, and multi-cup. Next slide. Looking at public modes of transport alone, it can be seen that Chipney is at 49%, meaning people use jeepneys, mainly as, a, as their mode of transport, followed by the CICAD, 29, 21%, and Motorella at 19%. The rest are, are breakdown into multi-cub, 7%, van at 1%, bus, 1%, and taxi at 2%. Next slide. The private transport in the next slide as shown. Uh, please proceed to the next slide. Uh, Ariane, the next slide. Okay, here it is. Next slide. No, no, no. Before that, the private slide. The private transport uh, slide shows that motorcycle is at 84%, meaning to say that all those taking private mode as a transport in their daily walk, in their daily uh, events, they use motorcycle as their main mode of transport, followed by car, which is only at 10% then others 5% and truck at 1%. Next slide. The consolidated share of these uh, modes of transport could be uh, segregated or cons consolidated into three areas. Active transport still at 29%. When you say active transport, that means walk and bike. Public transport at 54% and private transport at 17%. Now there is a move to make motorcycle as a legal public transport. If that would uh, be passed into law, then the public transport would now be 68% and the private transport would go down to 3% only. Active transport would remain at 29%. That would be a very good uh, breakdown, a very good uh, picture at a glance, but. If you, but one has to really look into the component of the public transport because if that is the breakdown that we're going to have, it looks very good, but having motorcycle all over Cagayan de Oro City as a main mode of public transport, I think that would not help decongesting the city. I think that would also, that would only exacerbate the problems that the city is facing right now in terms of population and climate change uh, issues. Next slide. Based on the results of the surveys conducted, we also gathered the trip purpose. So basically, a Kagayan goes out of their house to go to the office, which is, or work, which is at 20%, to school at 18%, church 1%, shopping and grocery 7%, recreation at 1%, others at 3%, and dining at 0% or almost 0% and basically 50% are home-based uh, uh, trips. Next slide. Based on the results of the surveys conducted as well as the different stakeholders meetings that we had with the different sectors, the team anchored the plan on three main policies. Number one, decentralization, number two, efficient transportation system, and number three, sustainable modes of transport, active and public. When we say decentralization, we mean it is the creation of centers away from central business district, providing alternative business locations. At the same time, bringing work closer to home centers that are more accessible to pedestrians 
and cyclists, and centers built with improved roads and drainage. Number two, the efficient transportation system is a modern, multimodal, interconnected, and environmentally friendly that loops these centers to the central business district, a seamless transportation system that offers perks beyond the door-to-door -door trip, encompassing even trip planning, ticketing, invoicing, as well as embracing intelligent applications. And third, sustainable modes of transport. We should, we should strive to have a striking balance between active and public transport, reducing carbon intensity of travel, at the same time espousing energy efficient mobility habits. Next slide. The different surveys conducted yielded the real trip patterns of the Cagayanons, painting a clear picture on how the Cagayanon moves, why the Cagayanon moves around, and what needs to be done to improve the way the Cagayanon moves. Hence, the two goals of the transport master plan. Number one, transportation that foster economic and social integration of Metro CDO. And number two, a transportation that uses intelligent application. Under goal number one, we have four strategies. Number one, increase the presence of active transport. Number two, modernize public transport. Number three, efficient use of private transport. And number four, the efficient movement of freight. Under goal number two, we have two strategies. Number one, efficient system management and operation. And number two, the intelligent transport system. Next slide. Okay, under goal one, strategy one, increase the presence of active transport. So the following are the outcomes that we're looking at. Integrated pedestrian and bicycle route network. Super block, elevated walkways, overpass or what we call the overhead bridges, active transport facilities. And of course, all these are grounded by policies. Next slide. So this is an example of the bike and pedestrian facilities that the transport master plan is espousing. So this one is district one. We have here a map of the bike lane from Pagatpat going to West City Central and crossing Barnaba Street, Concordia Jail, Barnaba Street, Dahlia, and even crossing the Cagayan, the Oro River, up to Duo Park. Next slide. This is the second district. Uh, we're looking at uh, bike lanes along the river from Makabalan to Makasandig. Then also bike lanes as, at certain areas within the CBD. From the Duo Park, where the District 1 bike lane uh, ended, we will start uh, another bike lane here going to Divisoria Park, Pila Sports Center, and to the Capitol Grounds. Next slide will show us a closer look of the Divisoria Park. Actually, this uh, picture is an example of uh, how the river would look like with a, with a bike lane and a pedestrian lane at the same time. So once it is crowded, it would look like this in the picture shown at the right side. Can we go to the slide before this one? I think there's a, a, a okay, next slide. Next slide. Okay, I, I, I didn't have the Divisoria. There was an enlarged, maybe I, I erase it, the enlarged uh, map of the Divisoria Park. But anyway, it was already shown in the previous map from the Duo Park, we move through along the river reaching uh, uh, City Central School or the, the Oval, then also another bike lane going to the Capitol grounds. So next we have the super blocks. When, you see, when we say super blocks, uh, this is uh, very popular in Barcelona, Spain. Super blocks are mainly um, converting certain areas of the city into 
uh, walkable and bikeable areas with uh, restraints to cars, trains, or buses coming in that particular block. The Transport Master Plan Survey from Household Interview shows that 29% of household trips are by means of active transport. And inter in the inter and intra barangay setting. In this context, super block design is adapted to look at current land use and mobility planning. So we are looking at the Divisoria area as the first uh, area that we would uh, implement the super block. Next model, next uh, slide. Okay, the overheads, the elevated walkways and overhead pedestrian bridges. Uh, examples of those are shown in the previous uh, pictures that we have. So these are overhead uh, bridges and elevated uh, walkways. We're looking at elevated walkways uh, along uh, Yakapin, going to Corrales Street, reaching capital grounds, and even up to uh, the Claro M. Recto area. Okay, next slide. Of course, the overhead bridge would be a certain areas in which uh, there is really a heavy volume of traffic so that we could close the at great areas for close it to pedestrians so that pedestrians has to move up when they want like to walk or cross the street. So goal number one, strategy two, modernize public uh, transport. So we number one strategy is the PUV modernization, the outcome, that we expect is the PUV modernization and integrated terminals. Number two, motorella routes as an in facility in in facility zones, enhanced taxi services and P2P vans, light rail transit, gondola, roads and water transport, and of course all these are uh, supported by policies. Next slide. So here we can see the public transport mode in Cagayan de Oro City. Basically, we're using jeepneys and motorellas. In the old uh, jeepney, only 22 are seated, while the rest have to have to sit at the, at, in the aisle. While the PUV modernization uh, requires a 29 passenger capacity jeepney with uh, people standing in the middle, meaning to say there's uh, an increase of uh, capacity of about five. In the motorella, we're looking at improving also or like enlarging the capacity of motorellas, like having the field cup in which in the current motorella that we have, eight is the seating capacity. In the future field cup that we're going to have, it would have like, like nine to 13 passengers all seated or a difference of five uh, passengers uh, seating capacity. Next slide. So this is the LPTRP routes for Cagayan de Oro City. Uh, this is a total of 57 routes, uh, but now we have increased it to I think 60 after several uh, uh, discussions. So we have here from biking on to Parmen Public Market in District 1, then in District 2, Agora, Makabalan, Lapasan, Gusa, FS, Bugo, Alae, Benoro, in the Hag. So these are the LPTRP routes of Agayan de Oro City in which the plan is still with the DOTR in Manila. Hopefully next week, the team from Manila would come over to discuss with us uh, some, minor, uh, some minor questions from the DOTR. So, and then finally, it could be approved and then that would be very, a very good development for the city, especially the public transport, uh, the public transport group, public transport sector, the chimneys sector in Cagayan de Oro City. Next slide. So this is a map of the motorel. Oh, this is a map of uh, residents in Cagayan de Oro City. As you can see, uh, the motorellas in Cagayan de Oro City are like 
regulated into five color codings, the green, the red, the orange, yellow, and the violet or the blue. However, in reality, motorellas move all over the city, even beyond their designated zones to decongest areas already addressed by cheapney routes and to cater to suburban barangays with emerging heavy density of population and travel demand, it is highly recommended that currently be redirected to some, some barangays as in-facility zones like in Lumbia, in the Hague, and Pagatpat. Next slide. So our reliance on low capacity public modes and motorcycles along with adverse effect on the environment like noise and emission need to be addressed through a better mass transportation. Here is a map of LRT line one, the proposed LRT, LRT for Cagayan de Oro City. The first line is a loop that starts from Punto where the port of Makabalan is located. It would run to Agora Market which is currently a terminal, as at the same time a market, a main market of Cagayan de Oro City, then to Lapasan, somewhere near USTP, then to Limkit Kai, of course Limkit Kai is near, is a mall, is a commercial area, and along that line also are several other uh, malls like the SM and the Alec and the, uh, Ayala, the Ayala Mall. So from the Limkitkai Drive, it would connect to JR Borja Luminarias. From JR Borja Luminarias, it would pass through Pogon Market, which is also a heavy traffic area in terms of foot traffic also. And going straight to JR Borja Corrales, JR Borja Burgos, then finally crossing the Cagayan de Oro River, reaching Carmen Market which is also a heavy traffic area in terms of foot traffic and also in terms of jeepney traffic. Then from there, it would run along Vamenta Road until it reaches RN Pila and San Nicolas, then cross again the river, reaching Consolation Road back to Gaabukayan and uh, uh, Punto or the PPA area. So this is the first loop that we are looking into. The next slide will show us another uh, LRT line, which we call the, the proposed LRT line two, which runs from Bulwa Terminal, passing Carmen, JR Borja, then reaching uh, Busa area. So the next slide will show us the, the merging of line one and two. These uh, lines or these stations of uh, the proposed LRT came about based on the transport surveys that we had. From the top 10 tra uh, heavily uh, traffic barangays in Cagayan de Oro City. If I would mention the top 10 uh, heavily traffic barangays in Cagayan de Oro City, Car number one is Carmen, Lapasan, Bogo, number three, Kauswagan, Pusa, Pogon, Bulwa, Kugman, Balulang, and Tablon. If you look at this, it's only uh, Bugo and Tablon, which is not uh, included in the line. Perhaps that would, they would be included in the future line of the LRT. So basically, that's the background and how it came up with this particular uh, lines for the proposed LRT of Pagayan de Oro City. The next slide, please. The next slide would show us the gondola. We always think of gondolas in the Disney theme parks or even in Singapore, or even in the mountain ranges in Europe where it's capped with, the mountains are capped with ice or snow. Well, gondolas are now important or it's now uh, performing a very important role in some uh, countries in the world, like in Median, of Colombia, in Mexico, and some other uh, countries. With our city topography, the demarcation of districts by a river and the movement of trips between downtown and uptown area requires mass transportation that address the challenges of transit connectivity 
with smart and efficient technologies. Hence, we're looking at gondola. It looks like it's like a cable car, a suspended car from above. So this is an example. We got these uh, pictures from engineer L.P. Paras. Thank you for giving us uh, these uh, pictures for our presentation. But really, this is a good alternative for our uh, CBD or from the downtown area to the uptown area because of the topography. There's a river and it's a hill area. It's difficult for us to widen the road. So why not take a look at having a gondola for this particular line? So next uh, slide, please. So this is the line that we are thinking of for the gondola uh, alternative that we have right now. So it will begin somewhere in SM or somewhere near uh, Savior, uptown, then down to uh, downtown area near the cathedral. So next slide, please. The bus routes and terminals. The future direction of our city's bus route will be directed towards the coastal road and its proposed connectivity from the east and west side of the city while additional bus terminals will be proposed on the southwest or the Lumbia area and the east-south or the Bugo area. So right now our buses are supposed to be mandated to only pass along the coastal road and the national highway. So perhaps we're going to improve those areas like in the Lumbia area where there is now a very good stretch of uh, national highway reaching Lanao, Del Sur, and even uh, Malaybalay or somewhere in the uh, Quezon area. So I think this uh, Lumbia, uh, Bayanga to Mambuaya or Talakad would be a heavily uh, traveled area in the near future because buses would definitely be uh, flying along this uh, line. So again, we have or looking at directing these buses at the same time uh, to our diversion roads to decongest uh, the city. Hence, we are also looking at terminals at the periphery of the city. Next slide. We're also looking at openings of new roads, extensions of existing roads, at the same time, also widening the roads of Cagayan de Oro City. Of course, we cannot widen the roads in Barangay 1 to 40. Generally, it's uh, basically it's already fully developed. Hence, we're looking at the suburban barangays like Carmen, for example, in which uh, we could extend and expand the road. Currently, the city through Hapsay Dalan, they have started already clearing the areas. And through also the traffic management board, we also elevated uh, board resolution to have a condition survey, to survey the condition of all the sidewalks in Cagayan de Oro City, of all the roads in Cagayan de Oro City, looking into the ownership, at the same time, the width, the height of each a sidewalk in Cagayan de Oro City. Because having that data, we could fully and efficiently uh, plan the walkability and bikeability of our Cagayan de Oro City. So hence, this is one of the few examples that we are looking at uh, road extension and widening. So Carmen is a heavily populated barangay with less roads. When I say less roads, kaya ang mga roads sa sulod, sa hilit-hilit, medyo makitid na because it's being encroached by uh, uh, informal, informal settlers and even business, uh, small businesses proliferating along the road. So, so perhaps we have to start from uh, Carmen because it's uh, heavily populated. Likewise, the next uh, heavily populated barangay is La Pasan. But uh, Carmen is more of a residential uh, area right now, of, although it's of progressing to be a commercial area. Okay, let's continue to the next slide. Uh, strategy number three. Of course, we have not forgotten the private transport. We have to look into the efficient use of private transport. We're still giving the population, the public 
the public a private transport initiative. But we have to use this wisely, like shared mobility, giving parking facilities, and at the same time policies that would uh, support all these uh, initiatives that we have for the private uh, transport. Next slide. So this is an example of a shared mobility application. Sharing mobility, there is car sharing, personal vehicle sharing, bike sharing, ride sharing, then on-demand ride services. Under ride sharing, there's such a thing as carpooling, van pooling. This is very good for schools and uh, offices. Instead of bringing your own car, you could just have a carpooling or a van pooling. Then for car sharing, we have a station base or a free floating uh, car sharing area that it could be a round trip or one way. So these are just uh, some of the applications of shared mobility. Next slide. The next slide. So this is now the current uh, trend. So for bicycle, micro mobility from like up to zero to five miles, you could use a bike or a scooter. There is such a thing as like sharing your bike, sharing your scooter. So although it's not popular here in the Philippines, we also don't have the facility yet. So perhaps if we could give facilities to our active transport uh, users, then I think this would, uh, the popularity of uh, this uh, mode would rise. Then for cars from five to 15 miles, you don't have to buy your own car. You can just, just have ride hailing using Uber, Lyft, Get, or Via. Or for long distances, you could rent a car or you could have even car sharing. So these are the new alternatives that we have right now for the uh, private transport. Of course, we are still looking at uh, encouraging th those private transport users to shift to public transport. But unless we have a very good public transport system, then I don't think we could encourage these private car users to move to the current public transportation that we have right now. Next slide. Goal number one, strategy number four. So for the three goals, we have been talking about the person trips of the Kagayanos. It's not only the persons or the people that's uh, giving congestion to our city streets. In fact, it's the movement of freight, the kanakaigma trucks going around the city, maybe because of the increase, uh, increase in population, the increase in the number of businesses in the city. That's the reason why we would like to be a logistic hub. So now I think we have to take a special look into the efficient movement of freight in which, before I forget, I think that would be the next study that we should undertake, the movement of freight from the port and the logistics hub. So anyway, going back to strategy four, we're looking at truck routes, the parking facilities for the trucks, logistics platforms, and of course, policies. Uh, next slide. So this is just uh, an example of a map of the proposed and existing truck routes. When we see, when we say that we are giving importance to the movement of freight, we're looking at really expanding the business uh, opportunities that we have in the city. Hence, we have to properly designate which are the truck routes that we should be using and of course, we are encouraging the government, especially DPWH, to really help the city in planning the truck routes for the city, especially giving, uh, establishing highways for the Cagayan de Oro city and same time expanding the area of uh, Cagayan de Oro city. Next slide. So now we're now in goal number two. Strategy number one, efficient system management and operation. Under this strategy, we have four main uh, outcomes that we're looking at. Number one is the CDO Transport Authority. 
right now we only have the RTA, but the role of the RTA is limited. I think it has to be expanded into a transport authority. And we're looking also on the possibility of integrating land use and transport planning. Perhaps the transport authority could undergo this in the future. Then promote active transport facility planning and community projects in the barangay setting. Then we're also looking at the promotion of the creation of truckers logistics association and also to promote capacity building for future CDO metropolization. So all these outputs are for the CDO transport authority that the transport master plan is uh, envisioning. Next slide. So once we have the transport, uh, the CDO transport authority, that authority would also undertake the monitoring of the traffic situation of the city through a main a control uh, center, exchanging messages and alerting for any emergencies all over the city. So this is just a picture of that particular transport authority, which is now very busy, not only planning, but money the entire the day to day traffic of the city. Next slide. So next slide, we have goal number two and strategy number two, intelligent system transport. So we're looking at intersection traffic signals. We need to improve our intersection traffic signals. Traffic monitoring system and CCTV, I think we need that. A CCTV for the entire city. Intelligent transportation apps is very popular nowadays. So if we have the transport authority, it could like in a way uh, oversee also all these uh, transportation apps that we have uh, right now in, in the city as well as the coming transportation apps that anybody would embrace. Then the single ticket. I think uh, see, when you say single ticket, it should go beyond, uh, it's not, it should go beyond like ticketing. It, it, uh, it would also encompass like trip planning and even paying the ticket outside. When you say single ticket, it does not mean only a ticket, a paper ticket, but right now we could use our cell phone in accessing all the transportation available in the city. And at the same time, even accessing the different uh, terminals or like uh, the different uh, trans transportation for, for lease. So that is what we have in mind for the the city's uh, transport system uh, intelligent applications then electronic road pricing once we have already very good streets once we already have the bike lanes the pedestrians and once the road network is already in place then i think we could have an electronic road road pricing like that in singapore because that would be one of the deterrent in uh, uh, making the private uh, truck, the private car user use the the public transport. At the same time, the public truck user to really divert or use the other uh, diversion roads because with the electronic road pricing, I think they have to think twice because of the price, the prices that you would be or the tickets that you'd be paying in order to pass a particular uh, road in the city. Then e-driving and vehicle technology, of course, we have the electronic, uh, the electric cars that is available and other technologies. Next slide. So all this, I think these uh, goals, the strategies, the outcomes and the outputs that we have crafted for Cagayan de Oro City is in line with Cagayan de Oro vision statement the strategic and prime development hub of the South, a city managed through good governance with an empowered citizenry that thrives in a highly competitive economy and a sustainable environment that nurtures its diversity and multicultural heritage towards a resilient, progressive and inclusive future. Next slide. 
So I think the transport master plan is also in line with the eight point agenda of the city, which includes teamwork, traffic and tourism as one of its uh, agenda. Next slide. So that ends my presentation of the transport master plan for Cagayan de Oro City. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Engineer Ava. Is everyone still okay? Hello, are we still good? So maybe we can first stand up and stretch our bodies a bit. Okay, let's stand up and count to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, now we are good. This time let us listen to the presentation of the Metro Cagayan de Oro Sustainable Infrastructure Development by no other than the Regional Director of NEDA, R.D. Myla Fay Carina. Director Mai, you have the floor now. Thank you, uh, Lord. I will try to stick to my uh, time as uh, there is another meeting actually on the side, which is the Social Development Committee of the Regional Development Council. Maayong hapon ka natin tanan. And uh, thank you for inviting me to share about our efforts towards the realization of uh, Metropolitan Cagayan de Oro and its perspectives. So next slide, please. Uh, this is the outline of my uh, presentation. I'll provide a background, including the context of uh, how we prepared uh, the Metro Cagayan de Oro master plan. And then I'll share the salient features of the plan. Next, uh, please, very important for me to share Ambition Natin 2040 because this is one of the bedrock, bedrocks of our uh, Metropolitan Cagayan de Oro Master Plan. I will also include uh, as background the PDP 2017-2022, the National Spatial Strategy, the Regional Development Plan, and the Strategic Development Areas, which are all included in the RDP 2017-2022, to including its midterm update. So the question is, what is the vision of the Filipinos? Through a national survey and a series of focus group discussions, the common aspiration of Filipinos can be summarized as matatag, maginhawa, at panatag na buhay para sa lahat, or strongly rooted, comfortable, and secure life for all. Sa atong pinulungan, ligon, hamugaway, o kinabuhing, may kasiguraduhan. The aspirations are family-centered. Even children envision a life that includes their parents. That was shown in the survey that was done. Strongly, strongly rooted or matatag means that we live together as a family and we have to, and we are able to spend time with family and friends. We have a work-life balance and we have opportunities to do volunteer work for the community. Comfortable or maginhawa means that we are free from hunger and poverty, that ownership of our home is secure, that we have good transport systems so that there are no barriers to mobility, and that we get to travel and have a vacation. Secure or panatag means that we have enough resources for our daily needs and unexpected expenses, that we feel secure wherever we are, that we expect to live long and healthy lives, and that we can retire comfortably. Next slide. The intention is to translate the vision into the next four medium-term development plans while taking into account our international commitments like the Sustainable Development Goals and the ASEAN 2025. It will take four presidents in the country to implement four PDPs and to get to our ambition, not in 2040. And the first to leverage no, its resources towards the attainment of ambition, not in 2040. 40 is the administration of President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. In fact, the ambition which was initially crafted during the time of uh, Pinoy was approved only during the time of uh, President Duterte through Executive Order Number no. 5 issued in 2016. Next, please. By the year 2022, the main objective is to lay down the foundation for a healthy and resilient Philippines. By the end of 2022, more Filipinos will be closer to achieving their ambition for a matatag maginhawa at panatag na buhay. The strategies to achieve the targets outlined earlier will, for, will fall under three major pillars of 
malasakit or enhancing the social fabric, pagbabago or inequality reducing transformation, and patuloy na pagunlad or increasing growth potential. And under these pillars are strategies, and each strategy actually represents a chapter in the plan. But we have also identified what we call cross-cutting concerns, cross-cutting strategies, and these are the ones indicated in pink. These are ensuring peace and security, accelerating strategic infra development, ensuring safety and building resilience, and ensuring ecological integrity, clean and healthy environment. Next slide. To ensure consistency with the PDP, the region's development plan framework for the period 2017-2022 adopts the national development framework. The country's long-term vision is well expressed in the region's vision of development. Northern Mindanao is envisioned to be the gateway and leading industrial core and trade center in Southern Philippines with dynamic men and women enjoying equal opportunities in sustainably harnessing its agricultural and natural resources in building a decent, harmonious, and safe environment. Take note of the word gateway because uh, every letter in the word gateway actually represents a strategy in our regional development plan. This year, is uh, crucial because we shall be formulating the successor plan to 2017 to 2022, and this will be the RDP for 2023 to 2028. And part of our assessment is really analyzing the vision reality gap. Are we nearer to our vision? And what would it take to accelerate no, the realization of our vision? If we are far from our vision, what, we, what do we need to do so that we will be nearer to the realization of our vision. This region's spatial strategy looks at the commonality of resources, potentials, and concerns in order to effect more focused interventions. Thus, strategic development areas were identified to serve as areas of efficiency, innovation, and creativity. The identification of the SDAs is anchored on the strategic goals of the national spatial strategy, which are one, concentration or regional agglomeration, connectivity, and third, vulnerability reduction. As I've mentioned, there are four SDAs, but let me just emphasize on SDA 1, which is realizing the, no, just please return to the previous slide, which is really realizing the Cagayan, Iligan, Industrial, and Trade Corridor. I hope you can see that on your screen. This cluster includes most of Misamis Oriental, eastern part of Lano del Norte, and northern part of Bukidnon. This expanded Cagayan de Oro Iligan Corridor, which will be the center of industrial development, stands to fully realize its potentials of becoming a rapidly industrializing area with a large export base. The cities of Cagayan de Oro and Iligan, with their existing heavy base, uh, existing base of heavy and large industries, serve as twin development poles that will draw more expansions along manufacturing and processing. There are also several emerging growth centers in the corridor to disperse development, as well as link resource-rich rural areas to growth and market centers. This spatial layout creates potential for intra-regional linkages and complementary growth in the whole island of Mindanao. Further, SDA-1 builds on its strategic location as it is situation, situated in the north central coast of Mindanao with the safest and most direct sea linkages to the growth areas of Visayas and Luzon. The deep shorelines which allow large shipping vessels and with the available and continuing upgrading of shipping facilities and rel relatively protected and more direct sea lanes and routes, the corridor offers a competitive edge in commodity transport and trading over the other centers in Mindanao. The Mindanao Container Terminal Port in the Fividec Industrial Estate is seen to become the south gate of the Philippines for international trade with the development of agribusiness centers and improvement of access to farm-to-market roads linking to the port. Next slide. SDA-1 is further delineated into five development zones. This is to account its spatial role and land uses, including its resource endowments and potentials, as well as the challenges that will be responded to during the plan period. Also, a number uh, of sites have been identified in the KDZs, which would play distinctive and complementary roles in order to benefit from large or uh, scale developments. So allow me to discuss 
KDZ1 or the Cagayan de Oro Metropolitan Area for this presentation. The Cagayan de Oro Metropolitan Area hosts the regional capital and is the seat of regional administrative and higher level social services and urban amenities. This in area includes Cagayan de Oro City and the adjacent communities of El Salvador City and to the east to Tagolwan and Manolo Fortich. Economic and social integration with the urban core, however, extend beyond this high growth and relatively high density adjacent communities along the existing major transport route to the upland periphery and farther along the coast towards the Lagindingan area. The city's proximity to the region's industrial estate also creates heavy linkages with the adjacent community. So naatay lima no, I'm part of this uh, revival of the integrated steel industry, proposed science and technology, techno park and regional government center. Uh, we're also looking at the revival of the integrated steel industry, particularly in the Fibidec area. Next, please. The conceptualization of a metropolitan Cagayan de Oro, next slide, dates back to 1990. Then Metro CDO Special Development Project or the MCSDP has been focused on the development of the infrastructure links between Cagayan de Oro City and Iligan City, the perceived emergence of a metropolis within, with Cagayan de Oro as the core city led to the conceptualization of the Metro CDO Special Development Project in 1990. The Cagayan de Oro Iligan Corridor Master Plan in the late 90s was part of the MCSDP, containing several volumes of studies that included major project proposals such as the Lagindingan Airport. In 1996, a comprehensive master planning for the Metro CDO was proposed to further focus on the planning for Cagayan de Oro and its immediate environs. In 2009, the, re the NEDA Regional Office 10 prepared the expanded Cagayan de Oro Iligan Corridor Area Plan and identified the Metro Cagayan de Oro as the hub for trading and services. Moreover, the Climate and Disaster Risk Sensitive Regional Physical Framework Plan 2013 to 2040 with a 2015 update also spearheaded by NEDA 10 and the RDC 10 identified Metro CDO as the secondary metropolitan center by 2014. Next slide. The Philippine Development Plan 2017-2022 indeed confirmed and recognized the functional roles of Metro Cagayan, Metro Cagayan de Oro to become the fourth metropolitan center in 2025, and that's just three years away. This is based on its projected population growth and functional role as a principal gateway and transshipment hub. It will also remain as a key educational center in the region and even in Mindanao. The PDP further highlights the potential of the region, particularly in the industries of banana, rubber, bamboo, cacao, cocoa choir, coffee, agribusiness, and tourism. Next, please. The NEDA commissioned the formulation of a master plan for the sustainable urban infra development in Metropolitan Cagayan de Oro or SUID Metro CDO, which is supported by the RDC 10 through resolution number 34 series of 2019, supporting the formulation of the master plan for sustainable urban infra development for Metro Cagayan de Oro. The study was funded under the Project Development and Other Related Studies Funds with the CPRM consultants and transport traffic planners as consulting firms. The master plan started in the later in the latter part of 2018 and was accepted and approved by the NEDA last year, March 25, 2021. So these are the objectives of the study to formulate a master plan for the sustainable urban infra development of Metro CDO guide the decision makers in the preparation and approval of plans, policies, and programs and activities in the urban growth center and improve the competitiveness, security, and resiliency from disaster and general urban conditions of the future metropolitan area. The study or the project had five, uh, had these key deliver deliverables, there are actually four, no? One is the situational analysis report. Second is the final report containing the strategies, policy frameworks, structure plan for the Metro CDO development, and infrastructure requirements to support the Metro CDO development. 
three FS of the top five priority infra projects for the sustainable infra development of the Metro CDO and capacity building, meaning trainings, webinar, webinars on urban and metropolitan planning and other similar expertise. So the succeeding slides will present the salient features of the master plan. Uh, by the way, starting a uh, planning period 2022, 2020, 2021, and we have sustained it now, we have actually requested our regional line agencies, state universities and colleges and other government instrumentalities to include in their budgets, programs and projects that uh, would help realize uh, Metro Cagayan de Oro. So next slide is the vision statement for the Metro Cagayan de Oro as agreed by the stakeholders and allow me to read. The premier, agri -indust the premier agri industrial trading service, a knowledge based center of the Philippines with sustainable ridge to reef connectivity for safe, secure, and livable communities. Two workshops were organized and conducted at the beginning of the study with stakeholders that include mayors, heads of LGU planning offices, national government agencies, regional offices, heads of civil society organizations, chambers of commerce academy, media, and other organizations. Now they participated in this workshop. Next, please. The Metropolitan Cagayan de Oro is comprised of two cities, namely Cagayan de Oro City and El Salvador City and 11 municipalities. 10 of these municipalities, namely Alubihid, Claveria, Hitagom, Initao, Hasaan, Lagindingan, Libertad, Opol, Tagolwan, and... Uh, and Villaneva are in Misamis Oriental, and we have Manolo Fortich, which is in Bukidnon. Six LGUs adjacent to the Metro CDO were assessed in terms of their impact on the area and may be considered to be part of the Metro CDO in the future. These are the municipalities of uh, Balingasag in Misamis Oriental, and Baongon, Libuna, Malitbog, Sumilao, and Talakag in uh, Bukidnon. Metro CDO has a total land area of 227,935 hectares and it has a combined population of 1.32 million as of 2020. Next, please. The master plan made use of various approaches with long-term or sustainability perspective. This include livable city, smart city, global city, circular economy, room for river approach, transit-oriented development, sustainability, sustainable mobility, eco-industry, open space framework, and aerotropolis. The structure plan of Metro CDO integrates the various elements in one cohesive master plan. The structure presents how Metro CDO will be spatially organized, how the various economic activities will be spatially distributed in a manner that promotes themes in the development of agglomeration economies, which are depicted through the clusters and the hierarchy of settlements. It also presents how the land use structure will be connected and integrated through the transport strategy that presents the layout of the intermodal transport system. It further illustrates the management of the spatial growth and expansion of urban development activities through growth areas, which will guide and ensure the coherent spatial expansion of the metropolis. I will share with you some of the spatial strategies that are mentioned in the plan. One is the polynuclear metropolitan structure. The master plan adopts a decentralized structure through a polynuclear organization of urban centers anchored on the current town centers and the CDO central business district. This scheme allows the different cities and municipalities of Metro CDO to have a different role in the metropolitan area and prepare and implement their CLUPs to translate that role into a coherent land use strategy at the LGU level. Next, please. Cluster strategy through establishment of economic clusters of LGUs. This one, this strategy builds upon a polynuclear multimodal framework where, a, where each nucleus has its role in the hierarchy of settlements. Geographically, these settlements are proposed to be organized into economic clusters, each cluster performing a menu of economic roles that will evolve as a result of the influence of the major economic activity that will occur in its principal locality. Four major clusters have been identified. Each cluster has its contributing economic role to Metro CDO and is comprised by complementary LGUs. Now, and this is also aligned with the strategic development areas that I have, I, that I have shared previously. The four clusters are the following. 
Air Aerotropolis Cluster, where the Lagindingan Airport is located. Another is the Cagayan de Oro Cluster, where the core city of Cagayan de Oro is located, the Education and Financial Center. This cluster is the gateway to industry, commerce, and trade. Then we have the heavy industry cluster covering the Fividec Industrial Estate and the agro industry cluster of Manolo Fortich, Bukidnon, and Claveria, Misamis Oriental. Next, please. Let me highlight the transport strategy under the master plan. The plan promotes that we widen mod model choice, modal choices, improve the efficiency of transport within Metro CDO, and considerably improve connectivity with other regions and the global market as well between Metro CDO and the Mindanao provinces. Connectivity within Metro CDO, particularly among its cities and municipalities of the Metro, will be improved via varying modes of transport, roads, railway, water and river transport, and cable car. The Lagindingan Airport Development Project is a priority project for Metro CDO. Lagindingan Airport has a design capacity of handling 1.6 million passengers a year. Passenger traffic in the airport exceeded its capacity just a few years after its operation at 1.8 million in 2016. Thus, the need for a larger terminal that could accommodate the current and expected passenger volume over the medium term became urgent and critical. The DOTR and CAVAP proposed to seek a private sector proponent under an appropriate PPP arrangement and to undertake the operations and maintenance of the Lagindingan Airport along with constructing the required additional facilities for a defined concession period. Key objectives of the project are as follows. Increased operating efficiency of the airport, increased networking and marketing of the airport, improved net financial benefits to government, and improved customer amenities. Next, please. The Mindanao Container Terminal handles both domestic and international cargoes with direct routes to Kaohsiung, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Kota Kinabalu, Malaysia, and Singapore. It has a capacity of 270,000 20 foot equivalent units or TEUs, expandable to 500,000 TEUs. Currently, it is being handled and operated by the Mindanao International Container Terminal Services Incorporated. The plan for expansion of the current and ex existing ports and harbors of MCT are being crafted to increase their operations. This is necessary as volume of cargoes handled by the port is expected to go up as the region is positioning to be the major transshipment trans hub in uh, Mindanao. Next, please. Uh, this one. As part of the continuing project development activities, the DPWH Regional Office 10 has been preparing feasibility studies for the Region 10 Priority Road Infrastructure Project or RECSPRIP to support the region's road network development plans, programs, and projects. The establishment of these priority infra projects is one of the road transport infra development strategies to improve connectivity and efficiency in Northern Mindanao. Specifically for Metro CDO, two expressways are proposed, namely Rex Prip 6, uh, Villanueva CDO Opol Expressway, and Rex Prip 7, Opol Naawan Expressway. These expressways aim to provide a dedicated fast access through the Villanueva to Naawan corridor. Shown on the slide is the indicative alignment of Rex Prip 6. Okay, the um, increased economic linkages between the eastern and western bay areas of Cagayan de Oro City and the surrounding municipality cities on both sides, as well as the full operation of Lagindingan Airport in Misamis Oriental have increased the mobility of both people and goods. Traffic volume on existing highway, the Butuan Cagayan de Oro Iligan Road or the BCIR, from Villanueva to Iligan City in western and eastern Misamis Oriental and Lanao del Norte has, sub has substantially increased beyond the capacity of the four to six lane highway, hence the proposed expressways. Next, please. The second expressway is the Rex Prip 7, which, transverse, which traverses the municipalities of Opol and Lagindingan towards Naawan in Misamis Oriental. Shown on the slide is the indicative alignment of Rex Prip 7. 
the project aims to address transportation constraints and induce economic development within its influence areas. This is proposed for funding under the PPP scheme, the preparation of a full-blown feasibility study proposed uh, expressway is funded in the 2022 GAA. Next, please. The growth area strategy of Metro CDO involves the establishment of growth areas, mostly outside of Cagayan de Oro City. By doing this, a more even urban development and spread of economic activity will hopefully be achieved. The major growth areas include the following. One, the continuing development of 3,000 hectare Fividec industrial estate in Tagolwan, Villanueva, the largest industrial district in the Philippines and is mainly focused on heavy industry. Next, the 526 hectare Habini Bay development in Lagindingan, Misamis Oriental. It has its own port along the Iligan Cagayan de Oro Butuan Highway Industrial Corridor. Habini Bay features a new town with residential products commercial retail centers, and light industry. The proposed 300-hectare University of Science and Technology of Southern Philippines, SNT Park, a future mixed-use development that will also house the main university campus. The El Salvador City Growth Area, which is intended to be a tourism area containing mixed-use development. Next, expansion areas in Cagayan de Oro City consisting of the uptown growth area, University Center in the Central Business District, and various infield development within the city. Next, to complement the strategies on developing new growth areas within Metro CDO, transit-oriented development will be pursued. POD develops communities by establishing mixed-use housing that are located about 500 meters away from train stations or public transport. PODs feature compact communities designed within walkable neighborhood concepts. PODs are particularly beneficial to low-income groups as they enable access to jobs within the community or nearby communities, provide affordable housing, reduce transport costs, and provide a healthy lifestyle due to walkable neighborhoods. PODs also promote reduction of pollution as these promote walking. Next, anchored on the priorities and strategies espoused in the master plan, pre-FS studies were prepared for five priority projects out of the long list of infra projects identified for Metro CDO. These are the Metro CDO Railway Project, Lagindingan, Cagayan de Oro, Villanueva section of the Mindanao Railway System, the Metro CDO Transit-Oriented Development Housing, the Metro CDO Waste to Energy Project, Metro CDO cable car system with related tourism development project and water supply improvement project. Of the five, uh, please go back. Of the five pre-FS, three are transport related studies, uh, namely Metro CDO railway project and the Metro CDO transit oriented development uh, project. Next, please. The Metro CDO Railway Project, this involves the construction of a high-speed and high-capacity passenger freight transport services linking the industrial centers of Metro CDO. A secondary but important objective is to relieve vehicle congestion along the busiest sections of the Iligan Cagayan de Oro Butuan Highway within Metro CDO, which in recent vehicle counts indicated vehicle volume road capacity ratios exceeding one, meaning the roads are experiencing congested flows. Next, please. The Metro CDO housing project, a 12-hectare housing project is proposed to be within a 43-hectare lot in Poblacion, Lagindingan. It is located near the intersection of Lagindingan Airport Access Road and Butuan CDO Iligan Road and the proposed Lagindingan Transport Terminal. The site is approximately 2 kilometers from both the Metro CDO Railway Project Station in Barangay Mo'og and Lagindingan Airport. It is also about 500 meters from the proposed expansion of the Lagindingan Public Market. Locations of affordable housing areas are within one kilometer radius of rail station key transportation infra. Another is the Metro CDO cable car system with related tourism project. 
The Metro CDO cable car system project is envisaged to be implemented in phases with the priority phase, phase one covering the 4.1 kilometer cable car line from Alwana Business Park to Malasag Ecotourism Village and terminate, terminating at Mapawa Nature Park. The concept is similar to the cable car facilities in Tagaytay, Vietnam, Langkawi, in Malaysia, and New Zealand. By the way, the discussion of the FS of this uh, of this project was actually very long. Sir LT was there. Sir LT has uh, has expressed his concerns about this particular project. Next, please. The phase one line affords passengers a sea bay view. Cagayan de Oro City skyline and mountain views. The elevation profile shows the steep gradient going to Malasag Ecotourism Village, to Mid-Range Station, and on to Mapawa Nature Park. As a complement, the natural prerequisite of mountainous and elevated profiles in a cable car alignment satisfies a sustainable and natural landscape that Metro CDO characterizes. A cable car connected to a nature park is a natural complement due to its rolling slopes. At the same time, it captures an existing view of both the coasts and mountain ridges of Cagayan de Oro. Future phases include Phase 2, Manolo Fortich Canyon Line running from Mantibugao Station to Daling Station in a north-south orientation, and Phase 3, which will be connecting Phase 1 and 2 lines between Mapawa Nature Park Station of Phase 1 and Mantibugao Station of Phase 2 along an east-west orientation. Once completed, the cable car line competes as one of the longest cable cars in the world, totaling a distance of roughly more than eight kilometers. Next, the Metro CDO Waste to Energy Project is a response to the bourgeoisie solid waste situation of Metro CDO LGUs. Harnessing energy from waste will provide not only a long range and environment friendly solution to the growing solid waste situation, but also contributes to power sources of which the demand is expected to increase in the future. The target beneficiaries are all LGUs of Metro CDO. Lastly is the water supply improvement project. The overall water requirements by 2040 will reach 121.55 million liters per day. Misamis Oriental, where majority of the LGUs that compose Metro CDO are located, has abundant groundwater and surface water sources. Potential water resources have been estimated at 5,752 um, million liters per day, which is way above the projected requirement of the master plan by 2040. Despite abundant water sources, the portion of the population that is served by existing water providers is limited. The fragmented system of water supply generation and distribution, which at present is LGU-based, has been subject to limited LGU resources. While, uh, while in areas with a dispersed population, water delivery becomes financially not viable. There is a need to rethink the structure of water supply system towards system integration. This is necessary as Metro CDO migrates into full metropolitan status with higher population levels and more expansive industry and business sectors. A strategy to implement this is the clustering of LGUs into an integrated water supply system in achieving economies of scale and financial viability, and through this enable a wider demographic reach of water supply services. Topographic and distance limitations are the main considerations for clustering of water supply projects in Metro CDO. Next, please. Operationalizing the Metro CDO Master Plan. In July 2019, uh, Rep Representative Ruf Rufus B. Rodriguez of the 2nd District of Cagayan de Oro City authored House Bill Number 432, an act creating the Metro, C Metro Cagayan de Misamis Development Authority or MCDA defining its powers and functions, providing funding, therefore, and for other purposes. The MCMDA, as proposed in the said House Bill, will perform planning, monitoring, and coordinative functions, and in the process, exercise regulatory and supervisory authority over the delivery of metro-wide services within Metro Cagayan de Misamis without diminution of the autonomy of the local government units concerning purely local matters. Next, please. The NEDATEN invited uh, Congressman Rodriguez to discuss how the SUID Metro CDO Master Plan 
uh, proposed governance structure can be harmonized with the structure proposed by his bill. Thus, last year, particularly May 21, the RDC 10 Secretariat and Congressman Rodriguez agreed that an alternate bill will be drafted to consider the governance mechanisms proposed by the RDC 10 Secretariat, which will be filed for deliberation in the House of Representatives. Well, next, please. While we are waiting for the creation of Metro Cagayan de Misamis Development Authority through the passage of a law, a special committee was created under the RDC-10 through Resolution Number 31, Series of 2021, approving and endorsing the proposed governance mechanisms for Metro Cagayan de Misamis and creation of an ad hoc committee under the RDC during its meeting on June 24, 2021. As shown is the RDC-10 organizational structure of RDC-10 with the ad hoc committee for Metro Cagayan de Misamis, and uh, it's one of the special committees of the RDC. In the interim, this committee will perform the governance mechanisms as indicated in the master plan and recommended by the RDC-10 Secretariat. Shown on the slide is the organizational structure of the RDC-10 Ad Hoc Committee for Cagayan, Metro Cagayan de Misamis. During its organizational meeting on September 9, 2021, the committee members elected uh, Mayor Oscar Moreno of Cagayan de Oro City as the chair until 30 June of this year. And then uh, we will have a re-election uh, when we have a new set of members for the RDC. On the governance mechanisms, the Metro Cagayan de Misamis Development Authority will perform functions that are metro-wide in nature, complementing the powers of local government units whose powers and functions will be retained, if not reinforced. As a metropolitan area, Cagayan, Metro Cagayan is expected to experience rapid population growth, growth uh, rapid population growth brought about by the natural increase as well as rapid migration. It will have high densities in population, built environment and infra and economic activities. As it goes through the metropolitan growth process, a wide range of complex policy, institutional and political issues from economic development, transport and traffic management, solid waste management to urban environmental governance will emerge. That's what we anticipate. No? These issues will no longer be confined within the boundaries of each LGU comprising Metro Cagayan. When this happens, the need for cooperation and collective decision making within a metropolitan wide system of governance will be crucial in ensuring the maintenance of the quality of urban public goods and services, as well as the sustainability of a livable competitive urban environment. Next, with the growing devolved function that will be performed by the LGUs next year, with the implementation uh, that will be performed by the LGUs starting this year with the implementation of EO 138, the Metro Cagayan de Misamis Development Authority will perform only metro wide services that need inter LGU coordination among its members. As a growing metropolitan, the MCMDA will ensure that member LGUs will develop not in silos but interdependently in an efficient and sustainable way. So these are the proposed functions of the MCMDA. I will not read them one by one. So you can see on the screen, number one, number two, number three, four, five, and uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The authority will provide the following scope of services of the MCDA as follows. This I will read. Metropolitan economic management, land use planning and zoning and urban, urban architecture guides, transport and traffic management, solid waste management, flood control, sewage management, environmental management and pollution control, tourism development, water supply, power supply, shelter and settlements, Disaster resilience and mitigation, relief and emergency operations, peace and order, health and social services. Next, please. As shared earlier, the RDC-10 has created the ad hoc committee that will perform in the interim the governance mechanism proposed in the Metro Suid Master Plan while we are waiting for the creation of the authority. Once the development authority is created, the committee will become the MCMDA Board of Trustees or MCMDA Council that will serve as the governing board and policy-making body on matters involving metropolitan governance. Eventually, the Metro Cagayan uh, 
The Misamis Development Authority will be established as a national government agency with corporate powers. The corporate powers are important to allow the authority to acquire assets and engage in income generating partnerships and investments with revenues that can be used to finance its operations and program. The MCMDA will coordinate with the RDC-10 and be part of the membership thereof. It will also establish institutional relationships with the LGUs, including capacity development for LGUs. The MCMDA will coordinate with the provincial governments of Misamis Oriental and Bukidnon to ensure synchronization of plans and policies. The governance entity will likewise coordinate with relevant NGAs in the preparation and implementation of plans and programs. And by the way, the Oro Chamber is a member of uh, this um, interim body. Next, please. One of the integral part in operationalizing SUID Metro CDO is the shepherding of programs and projects identified under the SUID Metro CDO Master Plan and ensuring that these are implemented by the concerned national government agencies. Hence, the RDC-10 in its annual budget preparation exercises uh, included in the RDC guidelines, uh, programs and projects to support Metro CDO in the agency regional offices, state universities and colleges, government-owned and controlled corporations, and other government instrumentalities preparation of budget proposals. Moving forward, the RDC-10 will continue to push for the implementation of the master plan, and we would like to thank everyone for your continuing support to our regional development efforts. Our road towards full economic recovery would have been bumpy without your entire support and commitment. So uh, thank you for uh, the time and the opportunity to share about our aspirations towards the metropolitanization of Cagayan de Oro. Once again, ng hapon sa atong I'll just take a look at the baka yung mga Thank you um, for that very interesting presentation, Director Mai. On to our next speaker to tell us the traffic management update and regulations, Engineer Nonito A. Oklarit. Engineer, you may present now. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. I mean... Proceed directly to present to you the traffic management update and regulations, and let me present this very briefly. Okay, next slide, please. My outline presentation <clears throat> one is updates of transport and traffic plan, second, imposition of traffic rules and regulations in the city, third is a COVID 19 response, and fourth, projects affecting the city vehicular traffic. Now on the updates of transport and traffic plan, it was already mentioned by the two speakers a while ago that uh, the transport master plan is already uh, at hand. And uh, as of now, the RTE is uh, finalizing for the printing of that uh, plan. And in uh, due time, it will be ready for submission to the city council for approval. Next, please. The LPTRP, uh, we have just received the comments from the DOT R Manila uh, as we submitted already the fourth draft of the LPTRP last November and it took sometimes uh, more than one month that uh, they had uh, uh, provided the response to us and they indicated in the response that uh, the LPTRP, the fourth draft, uh, needs for a moderate uh, revision and we are waiting on the schedule that the DOTR Manila, their uh, evaluator would come here at, at Cagayan de Oro to have a face-to-face -face meeting with us to discuss on the remaining portion uh, they described as for moderate uh, revision. Next, please. Imposition of traffic rules and regulations in the city. Uh, just would like to present or to share to you some of these uh, accomplishments that we had uh, if uh, I have enough time, uh, I would present uh, all of all, all of those uh, accomplishments. But uh, for the sake of the time allotment that's given to us, uh, I just would like to share only these uh, few accomplishments that we have from January to December of 2021. Uh, one is the clearing of illegal parking along the national highway. We observed that uh, our national highway, especially at the eastern side of Again Oro, uh, there were Several uh, trucks, vans uh, were, were really parked along the highway and it causes danger and hazards to our motorists. 
So we have issued 3,663 traffic citation tickets to the drivers who were apprehended at that time. And for our recommendation on this, uh, we are eyeing on the passage of an ordinance requiring warehouse owners to provide parking spaces for their trucks. Second, uh, the operation against prohibited vehicles passing the national highway. And from January to December of 2021, we have issued a total of 420 traffic citation tickets to drivers. Uh, these are the, what we call the uh, tricabs, these uh, tricycles and motorized tricycles, motorillas who are flying at the national highway. And we are recommending also that uh, we would have a establishment of the alternate road that would be constructed parallel to our national highway so that uh, this will serve as their uh, road when uh, they will traverse from one point to another. And right now, uh, there is an unfinished uh, road portion from Bugu to Puerto uh, as part of that uh, alternate road, but uh, it was not yet completed because of the problem of uh, right of way. Next, COVID-19 response. Uh, uh, pursuant to ordinance number 13855 of uh, 2020, we issued uh, citation tickets to the drivers who were uh, allowing their passengers to board their uh, units in excess of the allowable uh, number of passengers uh, desired or uh, intended whatever uh, level of uh, alert in, uh, in line with the uh, IATF um, policies, and we have issued 7,006 uh, uh, traffic citation ticket to the drivers who violated the policy on excess passengers. Next, please. Now, uh, we have projects affecting the city's vehicular traffic, and there are, I think, uh, more, than, more than 10 projects that uh, were ongoing right now that's uh, really affecting our vehicular traffic. And I would not uh, mention this one by one because it will take time. Just would like to uh, mention a few. We have here one at the portion of uh, Ricto Avenue fronting USTP, and this would uh, traverse towards Limkit, uh, Limkit Kai Center. Uh, this is a continuation of the drainage project that was uh, constructed from uh, Agora area, passing along the Valenzuela Avenue. And this would be the, the last phase of that project and it would be completed. And we are very hoping that uh, uh, there will be no more flooding along the, the streets of Ricto in that particular area when uh, this project would be completed. Another project that is ongoing now is the expansion or uh, rehabilitation of the portion of uh, Cagayan Bridge which was uh, just started uh, two weeks ago, I think. And we, uh, we prepare and we have implemented the temporary traffic scheme in the area. And we can experience uh, a certain time of the day with uh, traffic conditions in that uh, particular area and in its vicinity. Another one is the uh, project along the uh, the still at Recto Avenue, uh, somewhere here in uh, Klaus Wagen uh, section and uh, Bayabas area. So uh, all of these projects uh, affecting our vehicular traffic is uh, for drainage project. And mostly it was uh, implemented by uh, the DPWH 10. Again, we are hoping that uh, these projects upon its completion would help us to uh, eradicate the flooding uh, that would uh, occur, especially during uh, heavy downpour in the city. And we experienced that last December. Uh, there are many streets, roads in the city were flooded because of the heavy downpour uh, caused by uh, Taipon, I think Taipon Odet. Next. I think that's all. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Thank you, uh, Engineer Oklarit. Um, 
This time we want to hear reactions from our private and pri private uh, public and private sector to the presentation we watched them here earlier. To start off, we have with us today the Oro Chamber Past President, Engineer Elpidio M. Paras. He is the President and CEO of Parasat Cable TV and the President of the Promote Norman Foundation. Sir LP, good afternoon. You have the floor now. Yeah, good afternoon, uh, President Ray. Good afternoon, uh, fellow Oro Chamber members. Uh, first of all, I'd like to commend uh, the three women, the three powerful women that uh, have uh, been our resource persons uh, regarding metropolization, regarding the traffic, traffic management uh, issues and other concerns. Uh, I must say that uh, they have uh, made uh, very uh, comprehensive reports. Mukhang ko lang yung ating oras dito to react uh, properly to to what they have presented. Those are three long presentations. So anyway, uh, yeah, it's it's exciting that uh, metropolization is upon us and that it's something that we look forward to uh, in the next couple of years. I hope I can still see light of day uh, when that happens. Uh, you know, for me, time is running out. But anyway, uh, that's another story altogether. Let me make a comment first on uh, uh, Mom Annabelle's uh, presentation about the the data that they have gathered uh, regarding uh, regarding the traffic situation in the city no uh what my, uh, i'm particularly concerned now about uh, as I, i've seen uh, there you know in the surveys majority of the traffic that is being generated inside at, uh, in inside the urban areas of Cagayan de Oro are motorcycles and uh, motorcycle driven conveyances like tri cabs uh, uh, pedicabs and uh, and uh, motorellas no i just wish that uh, there will be a uh, a honest to goodness study so that uh, this uh, mode of public conveyances uh, can be um, uh, can be see, uh, studied no? as if it is really doable in the long term especially that uh, the city is bursting at its seams no and because of the lot of people have chosen Cagayan de Oro as their home base and uh, as their business base because uh, because its proximity to uh, to the ports, the airports, and the major highways that uh, crisscross Mindanao. So my issue is that uh, perhaps you know uh, there has to be a more efficient way of bringing people around, and that's why I I saw that uh, in the next presentation of Abilene, uh, there was a um, a portion regarding the LRT uh, one and two plans, and uh, also made mention about uh, the gondola solution. So this is, uh, you know, you know, I'm, you know, there's a lot on on our plate right now. There's a lot. Uh, I think uh, uh, the traffic uh, management bureau. Um, Engineer Oclarit also mentioned the, 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 the sidewalk clearing and the clearing of the highways. There's a lot to be done. I, I'm just surprising a 400 rail lang nadakop sa in the last year, no? Sa mga tri -cubs. When it's obvious that there are more than that flying daily along the highways. As for uh, Traffic obstructions like big trucks and container vans being parked along the highway. Boy, you know, they just wait for the LTO or the Traffic Management Bureau uh, to leave and then they, they, they go back parking and posing a danger to, to uh, motorists on the highway. 
Well, um, I think, you know, plans as they are, are still plans if there are no concrete moves by our LGUs, our leaders, to not only look into these issues about traffic, there has to be a real, uh, you know, the political will, I think, that uh, is needed for our future leaders to address and implement the ideas that have been posed by our experts. Sayang, no, kung kaning mga plano about reblocking, super blocks, overhead pedestrian walkways, uh, the Lunhao project, and others, no, um, can be accomplished or can be implemented by the next administration because it's too late now for to ask the uh, the outgoing uh, head of the LGU to do something about this. So um, there's really a lot of things to say about the. Uh, about the issues today, I was pleasantly surprised that there is what we call TODs or transit oriented development. And I thank the NEDA for coming up with this because this is what we need. Um, once we have the high speed trains, for example, uh, and other faster modes of uh, conveyance of mobility for people, Development should be aligned in such a way that it will be convenient for the public to have access to the trains, the LRTs, uh, and the public buses and other uh, solutions. You know? So I, I guess you know the this will have to go beyond just plans. We will have to find proponents for these transit-oriented developments. Another concern that I have is that uh, clearing the sidewalks, if ever, if ever, because it seems that there are almost no sidewalks here in the urban areas because they're already occupied by vendors, by small businesses who display their wares on the sidewalk. by other, uh, well, uh, residents that have made the sidewalks their resting place or their eating place. So, you know, there has to be a solution to this. And one of the things that I see is that a lot of informal settlers have already established themselves within the city, uh, urban areas, uh, simply because they need to be able to go to their places of work. Let me cite an example. The Agora area, Agora Lapasan area. There must be, you know, easily 50,000 families in that area living in decrepit uh, conditions in, you know, dilapidated structures, which are a danger to them and also which are fire prone. I just wonder if our LGUs have really tried looking into how to resolve this issue of informal settlers. We all know that most of these areas that informal settlers have settled themselves are owned by a few families in the city. And, you know, I don't want to cite the name of the family, but, they, you know, there are a few families that control most of these squatter areas. There has to be a solution. Uh, you know, uh, in other countries, tenement housing, uh, vertical housing infrastructure is always the solution that they, they do. Like, look at Singapore, for example. Uh, it's such a, a small country, which is just a big, just as a small city also, a, a whole country in one small city, but they have been able to repurpose 
or reform uh, valuable real estate into high-rise housing condominiums. So, you know, our dream really is that, you know, sana, no? the Agora area can be redeveloped by these families that control them or own them. And, you know, it's, it's really sad to see all these structures, you know, continue to proliferate uh, over the last five decades already. Now, look at the Singapore model about the electronic road pricing scheme, for example. In Singapore, uh, private vehicles uh will have to pay toll going to particular areas in the city i guess this will have to be studied also uh, because you will see that most people even if there's only one person in a car commute to the city center because that's where their place of business is and clog the major arteries of the city and it's a such a very inefficient way of mobility and that's why I, I guess you know we'll have to look all at all these solutions no and we have to also start doing or implementing an honest to goodness zoning campaign good example is osmenia where most of the hardwares car accessories, uh, motor vehicle shops, and others, retailers, you know, are crowding one narrow strip uh, that's barely a kilometer long. I guess, you know, our leaders will have to look at uh, finding a way to convince them to move somewhere else uh, nearby. I'm sure there are a lot of empty spaces in the La Pasan area, especially just before the eastbound terminal, for them to, you know, relocate themselves into more uh, efficient uh, uh, logistics, no? Uh, because, you know, right now, Osmania was never built for uh, trucks to come in. But you will see that every so often, every hour, every minute, there are big trucks that come in and out of the, the big hardwares that dot the Osmania uh, Avenue. So, yeah, uh, the centralization is, you know, I think one of the solutions that have been presented. We all know that the uptown area is already, you know, uh, growing by leaps and bounds ever since uh, typhoon sendong hit okay and the oro most people now have, have opt, opted to move up to the uptown area to avoid the flood prone areas and you will see that developments are increasing in number uh even uh, what used to be a sleepy barangay, Lumbia, is now, you know, chock full of uh, housing developments. But the road infrastructure is not really adequate. Our experience, our daily experience going from the uptown area, uh, going to the uptown area from the downtown area daily is, you know, uh, you're lucky if you know you don't encounter traffic there. Maybe it is just in the off-peak times, but in the morning, when you know, thank God, while well, I school today, or well, there are no schools yet. But once the schools start reopening in face-to-face -face classes, that the Masterson Avenue to the to the bridge that is now being uh, repaired. So the Paseo area is, you know, will be a nightmare again. So these are, you know, uh, I thank the national government because the, the dike system, 
the flood mitigation projects are already you know ongoing and i i i am amazed that the big structures that the jica the uh planned the uh, dikes have you know have uh, a great potential also as walkable areas uh, for the city and I, I guess you know this dovetails into the plan of the Lunhao Park by our our mayor Moreno I hope that you know there will be efficient use of this walkable bikeable uh, uh, dike system that has been constructed There was many mention about uh, the Metro cable car and uh, RD Popop actually uh, mentioned that I was concerned about the project. Well, you know, the problem is there is no traffic at all to be resolved in building from the Aluana area to the Eco Village and eventually to the Mapawa Nature Park. Even uh, President Bong, Elias, past President Bong, already told the, the committee that was doing the, you know, that was evaluating the study that their family already had stopped in developing Mapawa. So, you know, I guess, you know, that project is uh, going to lead to nowhere. So this is the, that project is really just for tourism purposes, perhaps. But I guess we have to look at the, that gondola solution to be in, in the urban areas. And that's why I, you know, I, I, I hate to say it, but, you know, I, it's not because I was proposing something uh, for the uptown and downtown area. Uh, but the thing is, even before the Metro CDO cable car project was uh, conceptualized, we already had planned for an uptown to downtown link by cable car or gondola system. If uh, I saw uh, from uh, Avalin's presentation about the LRT uh, 1 and LRT 2, which connects vital populated areas in the city. Uh, LRT 1, which will be a loop going to Puntod around, going down to the Kogon Public Market towards to cross to Bamenta and go towards the RN Pelayes and going to Consolacion and back to Pontod, no? and the, the phase two or LRT uh, is uh, from Bulwa to Galaxy in Busa. This is really a good project to relieve the congestion within the downtown area of the city, especially that there are uh, several malls within this you know, one square kilometer area, you know, several malls. And that's why we really have a traffic jam all the time uh, going to these malls and having difficulty traversing vital intersections. And I, I hope that this dream of an LRT system will happen. Looking at the uh, diagram of uh, that was presented by uh, by Mam Avalin, uh, I will put an of uh, I will share a picture of uh, how uh, you know we can potentially integrate uh, the uh, gondola system with the LRT system. Uh, I wonder if you can see that already. So uh, you will see that uh, there are thin lines here that you will see that I have put houses. These are stations. Uh, 
this station in Paseo, for example, uh, will be connected. The first line will be called line A will be connected to the SM to near the SM area in the uptown uh, district. This is a three kilometer line uh, that will pass up that will have a very scenic route. It will pass along the riverbank of Cagayan de Oro, providing even tourists a, you know, a nice view of the city uh, since uh, the gondolas will be elevated uh, by at least uh, 50 meters above or maybe 40 meters above uh, the terrain. And, you know, the gondola system is ideal because uh, because of the mountainous terrain uh, in the uptown area. We simply cannot make a an underground system to cross the under the river and go up to uh, the uptown area. So the idea of a underground railway system, I think, is not feasible in this case. But you will see also that there is an, a line to uh, and I, I I saw one of our attendees here asking uh, about CM Recto. Another potential line that can be used, uh, that can be an expansion for the initial line A, I will call it line B. It will go across the river from Paseo to the Carmen area and then onwards to Liceo towards that corner uh, across this, uh, across Marcos Bridge, no? And that could be a station, like we will call it the Kauswagan Station. That's, you know, that will fulfill the mobility needs of people from Kauswagan, Carmen, going towards the city center by a cable car or from the uptown area down towards the Kauswagan area or vice versa. And the third line will be from Kauswagan towards the Gaisano area along CM Recto towards uh, ending at the Limketkai area across USTP. So that's, you know, there are three lines that, uh, uh, you know, uh, that are potentially uh, uh, would fill up the gap for the loop that, uh, the blue loop the LRT1 loop that uh, our expert planners have designed. So, you know, I, I have kept this actually to myself for a long time, but anyway, this is an opportunity for me to present this uh, and perhaps work on it uh, as a legacy sub project of sorts. Uh, but, you know, I guess this will help, you know, decongest or provide uh, adequate mobility for people moving and between the uptown and downtown areas and connecting all the malls. Actually, the line A that goes to the SM area in the uptown can be expanded for another station at the new Gaisano uh, Mall passing overhead along the Masterson Avenue above the traffic. No? I've seen uh, installations abroad where the gondolas are just above the road and they do not have posts in the middle. The posts are actually on the sides. So that is, you know, that is something that perhaps I can contribute to, uh, to this, you know, legacy project of everyone that there will be adequate mobility for everyone here in the city. But I guess I, I've said enough. I know, you know, uh, five minutes is not enough uh, because there's a lot of uh, other concerns uh, related to traffic. Yeah, before I go, I guess you know, there was made mention about an intelligent traffic management system. Yeah, the, you know, Unfortunately, the CCTVs that have been installed in the city, I wonder if they're still working and the traffic system, uh, traffic light system is, you know, working as it should. 
But this is something that our city planners and city leaders will have to perhaps, you know, improve in the coming years. Because how else can we have that kind of infrastructure that is not doing us a service? Uh, all our traffic lights are now manually being operated. If they are not centralized. So I guess, you know, that brings up the idea of a smart city project. Uh, and uh, actually, I had the opportunity to talk to the USAID AID, uh, Beacon Project. And perhaps this is something that we can push uh, for, uh, for Kage and Deoro to be a pilot for a smart city uh, development, such that everyone is connected. Uh, the city government uh, will have its own uh, network to manage the traffic, uh, a centralized network for security also, because crime is on the rise all the time. So these are, you know, big dreams. And, you know, I hope that the people listening today in, the, in this uh, discussion, some of you may become proponents for these ambitious projects in the future. I hope I've done my share for sharing. Uh, you know, again, thank you to our experts, our res expert resource persons. Uh, you know, this will, this will need a whole day discussion come when the time that face to face will happen. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you, Sir LP. Yes, thank you, Sir LP. We'll do that. So we hope that our um, COVID situation will really improve this time. Anyway, okay, thank you. Our next reactor is Engineer Sabiniano Callao Jr., the Chief of Planning and Design Division of the Department of Public Works and Highways, Region 10. Engineer Callao, welcome. The floor is yours. Good morning, Madam. <clears throat> Okay, thank you. I would like to congratulate the private uh, group, the Bagandial City Chamber of Commerce. Uh, It's a very good plan. The Metro Manila Skyway project was uh, a role model for all of us in the That the participation of the private is really, really big or is very important in development. But, uh, for the DPWH to, to work with our programs and projects, we always have to got, align our plans to the LGU. The transport master plan sent it. It's very, very comprehensive work. What is needed there is the central uh, in device clean system, there should be a central uh, or area where the bikers can uh, park their bikes and with safety. Uh, we had already a plan for that. Uh, we proposed that at the amphitheater. Hopefully, the 2023 will be our 2023 GA will uh, be able, we will be able to have additional funding for the amphitheater. Because without that, the realization of bike tech, transport system in, in terms of bike tech, deeply must, must realize as the fear of uh, the bikers that their bike will be stolen will prevent them from uh, doing so would prevent them from uh, using their bikes as their mode of transport. 
from their home to their workplace. <clears throat> the Cagayandel Coastal Road, the extension of the Cagayandel Coastal Road, that is the Puerto Gusasic, so opens up an uh, opportunity for the city to acquire additional land. The reclaimed areas would be a very good site for the relocation facility or our vertical structures for this informal sectors. Because the mountain side relocation areas we have based on our experience, people are not really going there for reasons that the proximity of their work as to that of the relocation is a lot like that's why when we pay half of the cost of their uh, set uh, their uh, willings because that is the mode of payment we are going to pay half then they are supposed to demolish then provide us pictures and then and uh, demolish them, then we will uh, release the, uh, the second half. Or oh, even 70-30, the ratio now is 70-30. 70% after the demolish. Uh, before the demolish, then the remaining 30% will be after. But many would not uh, opt to demolish. They will just receive the 70 and then walk. There was even a project in the system some of the PPA area that we were able to, we were not able to continue the implementation because of the right of the issues of problems. Now revert to your funds. So if we are really going to do, or we are going to implement the beautiful master plan, the transport master plan, we have to first solve the informal sectors, because without that, we can never be successful. We have done so many, we have implemented so many projects, but we are always confronted with right of issues. The expansion of the informal sectors is like a must-stop. So now, wala man lang na ang, wala man na, na occupy ang the whole city during my high school days. But now, even the Carmen, the Bolua, up to the good areas, like Anaka in Provence. The district six and seven is now as full if it's. After that, which we believe, ma, ma human magilasang efforts, but then the implementation of that will be in terms of PPA, and then we really have the the knowledge that there are really uh, private uh, firm are interested. Paying on the gap on our problems, right? And the realization that depends really largely on the will, the political will of the LGU to put up relocation areas. They are registered voters. No politicians would uh, want them to be out in their areas. That's right. That's on the political side. But for the DPWs to succeed and to, to implement the transport master plan of Cagay de Oro as master plan depends largely on the 
we we deal with the informal supplies. Right now, I, we are confronted with how are we going to complete the one billion in 2021 trillion fund? The panaman na tapos yun. The panaman na complete implement yun. Then there are na mga 2022. And then Congressman Robos is asking for 1.8 billion for another 2023 fund for system. Those funds can be implemented readily. By 2024, the allocation for drainage will now be shifted to road network. So lamaki yung allocation for road network. Na sold na ang problema natin by 2024 or no onwards if we can complete the drainage system by 2023 which we have already in man. Di lang naman ma-implement. Right now, nagpublima pa may daan gani sa Kulambog and area because di lang naman ma-implement yun naan naman ang mga tao. Also, the Bitanag, we have five contracts that hantag ka rin di lang naman ma-procure because the plan cannot be completed then we are another dealing with another problem there is a Makabalan Bulbul Bridge. After the Makabalan Bridge is completed, it will now be connected with the viaduct going towards Pipe. That stretch alone, I don't know how to implement that because the sulat na ang mga tao na Dili sila gusto niya. We already received it, and it is coming from the, presi the president uh, from the OP, ang sulat niya. That alone is a manifestation na madili pag yapon ang amo projects. So, if the Deputy Village has the allocation of funds for right to pay for major projects, Tapos, dili na mo ma-implement tungod kay mas ipag naan ang kundi di mangyapag magamit. Kaya ang gusto mangyong sa tao, bayad na. Ayan sila mong gawas. And then you only have one year allocation for the funds. And may expire. Dili po may pwede mag-allocate o right to pay for right to pay only. Bawal po. So isama gina mo siya ang right to pay on civil works. In a one year period, Do the ko kaya allocation uh, the allocation of PPD is very big compared to other cities that's around 5 billion if we can really implement that in a yearly basis Kagandioro would have a very good transport system the request of Dr Abus uh, Dr An Kaulugan on the uh sa taas so is yang dalan is taas masterson avenue we already started the masterson the version of masterson avenue but pag sugod plan na mo galio sa dimi asa mi paing we already have a plan from uh, lumbia up to it somewhere in this end or before this end or after Pueblo. But to connect out to the Western Division Road is another problem for all the part. So we are going to have another viaduct. It's okay. However, we will be still kind of confronted with the right of issues. What I'm trying to say is that unless we can uh, have a very good uh, relocation area, that is attractive to the informal settlers. The implementation of our transport master plan is not that high. Kay dagha naman na yung private sector ng mo sugot at ang PPP, probi naman na siya. Ang gahi mo na mo karoon, what we are doing is only a piecemeal allocation on a certain stretch of road on a yearly basis for reasons that uh, 
basically all the right issues. Now, another thing to do is pagnanalasya on the social aspect. How to dapat na lapo dyan sila mukung kami kay dili man pili o forest labaw. Another uh, part of the area that we open up for uh, uh, the possible reclamation is when the RxPEP 6 will be implemented somewhere in the western side of Cagandi or will another have a potential re re reclamation area. And those reclaimed area, it's really a good area for the city to develop. Ano ang unahon? So kung unahon tayo sa kustal ang gino, sa kustal gusa to perto, unahon ang inyo ko uh, allocate for kay gasugod naman dito. And it will continue on a yearly basis. We are pouring there a billion a year. Can complete that. Sabayan ninyo din ang reclaim, uh, reclaim area and then put up a vertical structure for informal citizens. Everything will be solved. Even your, even your transport master plan from the population or from the city can be implemented and can be realized as long as you can transfer those people on a pace that is within the proximity of their livelihood. Pretty good. But until then, I, I doubt, I really doubt. Just an example is we reverted funds on a drainage project because dili na naman na para. Karan Galisip na sabi, it reduces our personality, our, uh, our, ah, uh, kaan bali? Personality to ask for funds, more funds. Sige lang may England, let's send the love is are always asking fans that they are behind schedule on the implementation. But then we keep on insisting. So again, the allocation for drainage in a yearly basis is around 1 billion. If we can complete the drainage system, because that is basic, uh, we experience really a very hardship in terms of uh, flooding in areas of uh, USTP, Kitkai, Nisip, and, and Agora. If we could solve that, that one billion will now be included or added on top of the existing another two billion for the road network. So, dako kaya ang possibility ng makomplete na mo ang road network. The three road, the diversion roads that uh, Congressman Ropos is keep on saying is the coastal, the Eastern Division Road, and then the other one that is uh, Balubal towards uh, Indhak. Mahumana na siya, if we can complete that, then maybe somehow the implementation of the transport master plan within the city that involves bike lanes, sana na kaya kato. Siya. Tugangan pa ito inyong uh, train. Wako kayo ito. But again, the influx of people towards Kagandio City, hindi ginagyan ko ito. Ay guwapo mo ganito. Sa saada mo ginang kagaya. Uh, it's the center of uh, Mindanao. We are the only region connected by five, five by the four regions in Mindanao. Ang, ang Dabao connection yeah, is only uh, 12, 10, and 13. And 12, and 9, 10, and 11. But Kita, we are connected with 9, 11, 12, and 13. Tana regions connected sa. We have connectivity. All the opportunities, both in economic uh, development or in economic uh, activities, is towards Kagandi. 
aside from the fact na friendly ko na kagayt yo and then uh, only kaya lang na 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 broke ang record na wala pa sukad bumbahi ang kagayt yo during the time to ito nga yan that was the first time in my if my memory serves me right diri ko lang dako sa kagayt yo lokat pag yun sukad sa nagbumbahan ang kagayt yo so safe in terms to living safety that I get to. Everybody wants to stay. Amo ganing director, daggan ka yung gusto maging director sa kagayandiyo. Because sa kagayandiyo yung lugar. To develop kagayandiyo is really our moral obligation as a, as a government officials. It is our moral obligation, not only kita man na adiri. Do not be, do not be, do not worry about the DPWs because we always align our projects to the NGU. Much more than sa Kagayan de Oro kay the coordination with Kagayan de Oro LGUs is a better one compared to the other LGUs. And napag yun din si Director Popo na stick na kaya nila pinig din yung may walay coronation. So, sa lagi kaya ang resulta. Pagka problema lang ang may, siya rin yung pwede, okay kayo. Ang ako lang is dapat sabayan sa LGU. Because if the LGU will not do their part on the issues of right to pay, Mag-inisod yun eh. Sige man sila tabang, pero limited man ang action. Why? Because wala man sila ka-transparent ang tao. Wala, wala. Dito man sa bukid. Sabi mo, ito bukid. Now, the coastal road offers you a very potential for recognition. A very good site para himuan o vertical structure. Daghan nun din ang linyo di ako pa. Uh, building uh, uh, medium rise, five story, four story. Mabalin di ata lang ang information plans. Limpyo lang kagayan. Imuhan din ninyo butag, in, in between butag park. Kada ko magkaya ang idea. Dako kayang potential nga marikling sa Puerto Gusa area. Kala ganing gusa pa yung sa lapasan lang, pa yung sa PP, na miss out natin eh. We could have done that. We could have reclaimed those areas na lay ng abaho. Sayang. Na, di gusa per to section, maparehas ang sabay na sa gusa lapasan section. Mapabayaan na if dili sabayan sa NG. So I'm really asking na hope mabutang sa plano sa CDO na i-reclaim ang potential reclamation area sa CDO coastal road extension. It will solve our problem. I have to provide some information on the potential projects that we cannot implement. The one that is demandable area Amon talagang ipaagi nila sa Pimentel Street ko na. Ako nang sa likod sa Kitkay, going to likod sa may Kapalagar. O, unsa na siya, Dr. Ano ba na yun? Unsa na nga, straight? Chair Borja? Chair Borja? Kitkay din na Kapalagar. Ano na i-chair? Diyan mo na may agi. Lisod man ni. Ako, mga requirements sa amin. Pero part pina sa among approved if is na diyan i-agi di lang na ma-realize. Maputol taman na sa Sjarbo nga. Ang uh, amunda lang ikas libuna. Kaya di parallel roads, kinang naman na road connector in between strategic locations. So, di Kagayan de Oro Coastal Road, di BCIR, di Eastern Division Road, and then di di itong pinakaibabaw, naman na dapat collector road. Otherwise, 
it will not be that efficient kanang diversion kung wala kuning roads one of which is kadang sa diha lagi nga area but we believe nga ang kana daw nga area is originally da, lapad na patay to la na so wala na tayo. as to the RTA, sir, I have to inform you na diri ni mo agi sa amin dyan sa may mga dalag. Maglisod ni o add to me sa may mga creek na nga original from uh, Osminia to proceeding towards PPA. We will utilize the road, the, the, the existing road. Because if we are going to follow the creek road, dilit na may implement na mga project. So that would another uh, be a problem of party kahit takot kayo ng problema ang ma-contribute kung magtrabaho namin sa traffic. Now we, are ha we, are, we have a five contracts from PPA uh, traversing that uh, road towards Agora. Salik. And then to Sminya. Lima na nakakontrata din. Sa 2020 po. di ibid na lang mo na siya kung ma-plaster lang na mo ah, sa dapit ang ang bubuko kahit na dili pa mi sa point na galisod mi og uh, connect the at the back of the oral solid uh, solid shipping uh, solid shipping yeah the solid shipping we cannot penetrate the solid shipping because of the area of the solid shipping supposed to be is natural uh, area but we cannot do that so we have to divert it to the back of the solid shipping then connect again to the existing pavement road. So, mag-create ng another problem for RTA. Luoy biya po niya RTA. Kung saan nila pag-manage ang traffic, kami sige may bukbok, kami may bukbok, bakpak, ala, bakpak, bakpak. Di mo po pili, di po niyo yung bakpak, sir. Kinahalan lang yun po. Di mo po pili na ito ihuli itong kwarta because the position of DPW's regional office in terms of uh, funding might be delikado kung magsigit ang uli o kwarta. Madili na ito ma-implement. Nakauli me ang question sa among mga ASIC music. Grabe. Grabing piga. Grabing, grabing explanation. May mortal sin man ang mag-uli o kwarta. Na karon ug dili na mo ni ma-implement ta bag ulit lugar na di gyud ba hang yo gi kon ni engineer ni to na please sir pasensya lang gyud diri na gyud mo agi sa dalan kay dili man na makaya ang trick kay ang trick na puno man og tao na sa diary ni to supposed to be at the tangal pa the minimum that we, could, we need is 12 meters pero the existing current traffic is only four to five or six pinakadako. So did you then we magi sa dalan na karo? The only the only area that we will be going to pass to pass along the creek is the the area from uh, Bisaya traversing the creek. Uh, Kita na click sa likod sa STUSTP and then, then uh, mulikod na yun before may mga watong solid shipping. Dito na yun is dalan. Dili na may mga aging. So, sa likod na yun, dalan gap. Dili na may mga follow sa old click. Because doing that is a uh, impossibility. We were just repeating the liberation of France pa atong haymo ni Engineer Picori. We, in the after Mahuman Atun Diversion Road, the next part of the DPWs is to endeavor on the flyovers within the city. That, that's the time we're walking to Mudol, like the city, and another, another, another time, and 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 another The instruction from Central Office is try to uh, Make a plan, utilize the four lanes of national road to design for flyovers. So, katong mga four lanes namo, 
musugod na midaan o conceptualize karon. So ako na ang isugod sa inyo para dili makonatak. That is uh, specific na instruction gikan sa app. Because of the increasing uh, ang data that we receive is based on the traffic count that we had. Naman may station traffic counters in, in the specific locations of our national parks. The result provides that uh, requires us to do, to now proceed with the concept of flyovers on major cities, particularly Cagayan de Oro. And we have four lanes. We have the Master of uh, Avenue, four lanes now. We have, uh, of course, BCIR is four lanes. And then when the division road is uh, converted to national road, that is another four lanes. All the, the, all the diversion roads we are constructing are all four lanes. Wala lang namo maapas ang pike lanes sa karaan, but on the new diversion roads, we already incorporated it. Lang ama lang isang ang connectivity niya sa among pike lanes dito sa city nga ka, plano ni Ma'am Avalet. Okay. But then, sige man tao ka correlate, so it's not really a problem. So, mubalik niya po sa akong toyo. In order for us to be successful or to come up to, in order for this plan to be a realization, particularly the transport master plan, we have to deal first with our eyes. Because without doing it, it's near to impossibility. If we, are doing, if we are not going to take into account the issues of the right of it. The secretary, our previous secretary, Mark Pilea, emphasized that uh, the uh, first, uh, uh, first, first uh, site or first one uh, indication that there is uh, there is a uh, hesitation from the landowners for the acquisition of right of way. We will proceed with the uh, expropriation. But sa yung instruction, the lease will be implemented. First sign lang sa refusal, the lease will be open because na mga yapo yung humanitarian aspect. Nana nang instruction na, di ka pa nang magkakaimplement. So I think I have to end this. Dito mo malalim What is the, the, the way we understand, the way the DPWs understand in terms of project implementation is that uh, as, as long as we can deal with the right of way, tuloy tuloy ang project. Other than that, we do not have a project. And uh, we need to maximize the funds that's being allocated in Cagayan de Oro. It's a five billion a year. That's too big for Asia. For both uh, two districts. If we could utilize that um, on a project that would uh, transform uh, into contribution of the master plan of the Tagayandor na maka-align yun mismo sa transport master plan wakong takaya. Right now, dili pa na mga kakumplete to ang mga project because of right of it. So, again, di rin ako taman. Pasalamat ko tagaan ko chance to to make some possible possible I open it for us. Let's have, let's try the coastal Kagandero coastal. Let's try to dwell on that uh, past potential reclamation area. I believe that would solve our problem. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Engineer Kaliao. Uh, thank you, dear speakers. And we know. Uh, we have a very interesting. We have very interesting topics this afternoon, and in in the interest of time, uh, we will instead allocate maybe um, 
<laughs> Just few questions. Yeah. yeah. Sir, um, Mr. Moderator, Sir Pimbo Gapor, please welcome, right. sir, to moderate our open forum. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So I believe we have a very, very insightful, informative uh, session today. As what uh, Engineer LP mentioned, Murag Kapos gets oras for everyone. I think we will have definitely a separate venue for, for this one. Very interesting uh, discussion we have this afternoon. So allow allow me just to uh, put in back Engineer LP and uh, our panelists and our guest speakers here this afternoon. I think we'll, we'll just uh, boil it down to one question. No? Earlier, I was wondering, back of my mind, um, the question on when. Uh, there are two years that were uh, mentioned earlier, 2022, which is a critical year for the plan of NEDA, and then 2025, which is the Metro CDO deadline. No, So um, that's uh, that's one big question there probably for our guest speaker. And then let, let's zoom it in a bit. Uh, there's a question here, a specific question on when will the Balulang Makasandig Bridge be open? I think taga uh balulang siguro ni nangutan or taga makasandig baka um anyone from our panelists or guest speakers can answer this specific one siguro we'll just dwell on this one and then maybe others can come in and uh fill into the the question on the 2022 or the 2025 uh maybe Eng engineer ben can answer or or uh engineer nonito can answer the question yes sir uh, right now uh, because of the expansion project of uh, Cagayan bridge the balulang makasandi uh, bridge was uh, temporarily open for uh, vehicular traffic though there is a portion in the bridge that uh, is not yet uh, fully paved but uh, the contractor has uh, uh, make it platin so that uh, it would be really possible for uh, vehicles, light vehicles only. Uh, trucks are not allowed to, to pass uh, along that bridge as, as of now, only those uh, light vehicles are. So as of now, the Balulang Makasandi Bridge is uh, temporarily open for uh, vehicular traffic. There you go. Thank you so much, Engineer uh, Nanito, for that uh, straightforward answer. And um, yeah, we're excited really for projects to be um opening up no and um i think our panelists earlier engineer paras and uh senior ben actually mentioned a couple of steps um a, a specific solution in fact no um which also engineer paras actually mentioned on informal settlers relocating them uh providing vertical uh, relocations for them hopefully we'll be able to get there uh i think that would answer probably the the question and when, no, the, the 2022 ba or 2025 ba. So maybe we can hear from the other speakers, our guest speakers uh, for this afternoon to give us more insights on that one before we probably uh, move on and close to the next session. Anyone, is feel, feel, please uh, feel free to jump in anytime. Uh, there's no deadline actually, no 2022 and 2025, uh, because you know that the incubation period for programs and projects, especially those that are funded by national government agencies, take time to take time to take off. No, for one, we would really require uh, feasibility studies no? uh, for the for the establishment, particularly of uh, infra projects. And uh, engineer engineer Ben knows that now that uh, we require FS. Secondly, for F for fiscal year 2025, uh, the metropolitan um, area is really gonna happen because of the growth, no? It's the, the growth, uh, the definition of a metropolitan area has something to do with the population growth and dispersion of uh, the population. And it's already happening, no? Uh, if we look at the population of the areas that uh, comprise the metropolitan Cagayan de Oro. So what we're, what we're saying is that because the metropolitanization of the area is something that we cannot stop, we might as well uh, avert no, the adverse uh, impacts of the metropolitanization. So that's why we have the Sustainable Urban Infra Development Master Plan for the Metro Cagayan de Oro area. And we have identified, seven, there, there's a long list of, uh, of infra projects that have been uh, identified for the 
because what we have prepared is the sustainable urban infra development master plan so it's really about infrastructure development in the metropolitan area there's a long list of uh, of programs and projects that have been identified by the metropolitan uh, mem by the members of the metropolitan uh, area and uh, we have prioritized this and uh, in fact in the in the 2022, uh, in the 2022 budgets of uh, of the regional line agencies, there are already projects for the metropolitan area. Uh, most notably, the road networks identified by the DPWH that would traverse the metropolitan area. You know, that's uh, the diversion roads and uh, and other roads. Uh, actually, starting in 2021, we have requested all the regional line agencies to identify programs and projects and include this in their project proposals. No, for the metropolitan areas, but uh, there are programs and projects that are better financed no, by uh, private sector, one of which is the waste to energy uh, project, which we're hoping that there would be takers and uh, also the railway uh, railway project, but certainly the programs and projects have already begun. Uh, first with the infrastructure projects that have been proposed uh, by the DPWH and funded in the FY 2022 uh, budget. Our challenge is really uh, creating a uh, an authority you know, that uh, that would take care of uh, of concerns that cut across that cut across all the metropolitan uh, LGUs, uh, and I have mentioned that in my presentation. But you know, pending the pending the issuance of a law that would create authority, we actually have an interim uh, mesh, uh, structure that discusses the common concerns. Thank you so much, uh, R.D. Carino, for the clarification and um, and also those inputs as well. I think there's a common um, thing that that our guest speaker and our panelists have mentioned on the the authority thing, no, and the political will uh, that was also mentioned by our reactors or panelists a while ago. Maybe one more one more input from our uh, panelists or from our guest speakers before we move on to the next segment. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, I just would like to comment yes, on the transportation master plan. Right now, it's still a plan. After the plan would hopefully be approved by the city, uh, I wish to lobby for the implementation of the different projects that comes in the plan. Meaning to say there would be feasibility studies that would come in. Once feasible, detailed engineering would come in, then construction. So it's still a long way. But at least we have the plan. Then also I, I found out that really the problem in the implementation of the projects here in Kaga and the Oro City is the right of way. The, the transfer of the informal dwellers to resettlement areas in which currently resettlement areas are in the flank, far flank areas of Kagayan, in the mountain areas or very uh, in the hinterland of Kaga and the Oro City, which means that we have displaced people from their works. That's the reason why, if you go back into the slides of the transport master plan, we have anchored the plan into three main policies. The first is decentralization, the creation of centers away from the CBD, providing alternative business locations, at the same time, bringing work closer to homes. So hopefully we decentralize people that are being uh, moved to the hinterlands could easily uh, work at these uh, new CBDs, which is uh, also catered by an efficient transportation system, striking a balance between uh, public transport and the private and the active transport. Same concept that was done in uh, Singapore when they started the master plan way back in the 70s. They look into the central business district and and decentralizing the central business district, then making a transportation network so that all these uh, new centers would be looped together. And also at the same time, like the concept of the suit in which there is a transit oriented development, the tenement housing in Singapore sprouted because of that master plan, because they want people really to walk to work, to walk to school, meaning you would save so much uh, traffic congestion, you would save uh, money and more 
at most also save time for the people. So this is really a very good uh, contribution to the economy and also to giving uh, an efficient movement of people as well as goods. So that's the reason why uh, we have decentralization supported by an efficient transport system that is also spousing sustainable transport like the mass transit and as well as the bike lanes and the walkways. If Thank I you so add, much, uh, Engineer Evelyn. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'd like yes, to be uh, a rejoinder for, um, I'd like to serve a rejoinder for ma with ma'am Amelie you know, as I close, close my discussion a while ago. The greater challenge of metropolization of Cagayan de Oro. I'm sorry, Kaganina, na not na nakita na ko metro, metro Cagayan de Misamis. I'm confused now, kasi nakita na ko sa slides na neda. But really, what we have now is metro Cagayan de Oro, if I'm correct. And so with that, uh, I'm thinking, how do we connect metropolization with respect to regional application and local city application? Where does not just talking about Cagayan de Oro as a city, we are also talking about municipalities na 14 Kabok and the city of El Salvador. So with that, uh, I'm, ask, I'm gonna be asking then, um, do we have also transportation master plan for El Salvador city or are we rely, relying with that the suid plan? And how do we connect that? Striking with the balance again, na sustainable ang ato, resilient atong effort. Any infrastructure right now are always challenged by climate change and disaster hazards and impacts. So I'm gonna ask again, feasibility wise, are we looking into that? And traffic impact wise, are we looking into that? Environmental impact as well, are we looking into that? Um, the plan a while ago was showing the infrastructure development on the Bay Area. And our concern is climate change, storm surge, no? tsunami or whatnot. Those things matters in planning. And again, as mentioned ni Ma'am Aba, that's just a plan. We need to forward with uh, feasibility studies that are concrete. And then, of course, after that, we do a programming of engineering applications so that we do not just invest without counterbalancing what is the need and the opportunity with what is essentially sustainable as well. I'm just posting that because I want to talk with the ideas without posing questions which are relevant and essential to be addressed prior to putting in place infrastructures and budgets which will be lost at the end of the day as well. Because after all, we are accountable to our investments and we are accountable to our projects. Thank you. Cannot land. I agree. Thank you so That's much, why Dr. Our, Anagal. Uh, if I may, I agree that's yeah, why go, we go are ahead, pushing for a, for a sustainable and a inclusive development. And when we say sustainable development, this is the development that takes care of the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to uh, provide for their own needs. That's why very important ang feasibility studies. But we must remember no, that with the advent of EO138, where we have, uh, where we have uh, further devolved uh, some of the functions of national government agencies to the local government units because they're great they're getting a bigger share of the pie the local government units now have more accountability and responsibility especially in their development now as far as transportation master planning is concerned every lgu should have one no uh neda is coming in because uh, there are more than two provinces that are involved and uh we call it metropolitan. Originally, it's really metropolitan Cagayan de Oro. But uh, Congressman Rodriguez suggests that we make it metropolitan Cagayan de Misamis uh, to recognize the history that Cagayan de Oro was part of the bigger province of, uh, of Misamis previously. So there's a historical context to the change in the name. But hey, what's in a name? We're talking about the metropolitan area. And never, anyway, uh, the name of the authority will come later when the law is passed. But even without the law, we already we have started with an ad hoc structure, no? That looks into the that looks into the many concerns of uh, of the metropolitan area, and uh, planning is very deliberate as far as the metropolitan area is concerned because we know of the many ramifications if we don't plan deliberately and well, and uh, we believe that. The failure to plan is actually our plan to fail. 
no if we don't plan at all that's why it's really very important that we plan and uh that's why sa DPWH uh, engineer Kaliao has mentioned no nakana infra project dili siya basta-basta nga ma-implement kung wala feasibility study and the feasibility study includes a study on the environmental implications of the infrastructure projects. Very important for very big projects no, to mitigate ang iyang mga adverse environmental impacts. Now, when it comes to uh, programs and projects uh, uh, sa infra, dili uh, na na punduhan sa national government agencies. Very clear sa EO138 ang mga programs and projects nga punduhan sa national government agencies. So, uh, I hope Especially no nga ang Cagayan de Oro is really the core uh, LGU sa atong metropolitan area nga ang ilang mga programa nga nga ilang na gisugyot no nga naa sa plano masugda na unta ang FS. Uh, I hope na Cagayan de Oro would be able to fund some of the FS. Uh, there was one project that they proposed endorsement sa RDC which was a sewerage uh, treatment plan. Ikapila na to namo gibalik because there were issues to it no and uh the implementation of such a project would actually impede the implementation of another. So that's something that we also look into, no? uh, the gains of a particular project and hoping that the gains of a particular project does not actually diminish the gain of another. No? So gitanaw nato that the programs and projects are actually complementary. Now, uh, ang concern lang is that there are many ones, there are many concerns, but very sadly, we have very limited resources. We have very finite resources. And the important thing is really to be able to prioritize noon sa ang panginahang lanon. That's why in this whole metropolitan area, na may land use plans. Importante nga na ay land use plans ang tanan nga mga members sa metropolitan area and even katong wala sa metropolitan area because the land use plan should be prepared first because the land use plan should inform the preparation of the comprehensive development plan and not the other way around. Dili dapat ipaigo sa land use plan unsa ang development trajectory nga gusto nimo sa isa ka area mauna ang land use plan ay ha ang development plan but the land use plan cannot be implemented kung walay zoning ordinance nakita namo sa metropolitan area nga ang uban nga mga land use plans dili pa updated very important ka ma-update ang land use plan in fact even ang land use plan sa Cagayan de Oro needs updating because it is being overtaken by developments no, in the many areas of the metro Cagayan de, in the Cagayan de Oro city nga wala nila na anticipate when they prepared their land use plans so that's one so um we're all in this together we have to we have to we have to work together uh to address no um development concerns climate change concerns that's why in the latest na message ni secretary card neda will look into innovation we look into regional uh, uh, equitable allocation. We look into climate change, no, and uh, smarter and greener infrastructure. So that's one. Thank you so much, R.D. Carino, for for that uh, insight. No, I believe I, I will take it off from what you've last said. We're mm -hmm. all in this together, and mm -hmm. I believe. Uh, in the interest of time, um, I believe we'll have more forums like this moving forward. This is a very, very interesting uh, discussion, and I believe uh, time is of uh, ang ato ang kontra karon. And we move forward, no? And uh, we'd just like to thank everyone for a very, very engaging and uh, informative, insightful uh, forum today. Uh, kudos we have here from uh, our chairman, Mike Banyos. No? Uh, kudos to the three lady presenters that we have uh, this afternoon including our reactors and panelists, Engineer LP, and of course, uh, Engineer Ben. No? So, daghang salamat, everyone. Now, I'd like to turn over and back the floor to our MC. Over to you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, okay, at this point, uh, you know, we really we really appreciate, we do hope that we have more time. Um, so, thank you. And at this point, we would like to call our Oro Chamber Trustee Engineer, Bert Ako to quickly present the certificates of appreciation to our guest speakers and moderator. After which, uh, we will have just a quick, quick um, uh, photo op. Sir Bert, please proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Lut. In behalf of the Kagendiro Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, Oro Chamber, uh, it is my honor and privilege to present uh, the certificate of appreciation 
to Dr. Annabel A. Abozo uh, in grateful appreciation and commendation for his valuable inputs as guest speaker during the Good Business Forum, CDO Metropolisation, Transport and Traffic Forum, given this 18th day of February, 2022. Signed, yours truly, uh, Chairman, Awards and Recognition Committee, and signed, Raimondo G. Talimio, President, Oro Chamber. Thank you, Ma'am Abelin. Um, Annabelle, sorry. Mom Annabelle, sorry, sorry. Thank you, uh, The same certificate of appreciation is presented to uh, Engineer Abelin A. Kahulugan uh, in grateful appreciation and commendation for her valuable inputs as guest speaker during the Good Business Forum, Kagen uh, Dioro Metropolisation, Transport and Traffic Forum, given this 18th day of February, 2022. Signed, yours truly, and uh, signed, Ray Talimios, President Oro Chamber. Thank you, Ma'am Abalin. The same certificate of appreciation is presented to Regional Director, Myla Fay Aurora B. Carino. Uh, in grateful appreciation and commendation for her valuable inputs as guest speaker during the Good Business Forum, CDO Metropolisation, Transport and Traffic Forum. Given this 18th day of February 20, 18th day of February 2022. Signed, yours truly. Uh, signed, Ray Talimio, President of the Chamber. The same certificate of appreciation is presented to engineer Nonito A. Oklarit. In grateful appreciation and commendation for his valuable inputs as guest speaker during the Good Business Forum, CDO Metropolisation, Transport and Traffic Forum, given the 18th day of February, 2022. Signed, yours truly. Signed, Ray Talimio, President, Oro Chamber. Next, please. Same certificate of appreciation is presented to engineer Elpidio M. Paras in grateful appreciation and commendation for his valuable inputs as reactor during the Good Business Forum, Cagayan de Oro Metropolisation Transport and Traffic Forum, given this 18th day of February, 2022. Signed, Yustroli, Bert Akot, Ray Talimio, President Oro Chamber. And last but not the least, the same certificate of appreciation is presented to Engineer Sabiniano D. Caliao Jr. In grateful appreciation and commendation for his valuable inputs as reactor during the Good Business Forum, again, the Oro Metropolisation Transport and Traffic Forum, given this 18th day of February 2022, signed, your Trolley Bert Apo, Chairman and Awards, Awards and Recognition Committee, Great Talimio President, Oro Chamber. Sorry, there's another one. <laughs> Same certificate of appreciation is presented to my friend Luzmar M. Gabor in grateful appreciation and commendation for his valuable inputs as moderator during the Good Business Forum, again, the Oro Metropolisation Transport and Traffic Forum, given this 18th day of February, 2022. Signed, yours truly, Bert Akot, and Ray Talimio, President, Oro Chamber. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you. And again, our sincere appreciation to share with us your valuable time and expertise to our topics and discussions today. Uh, may we request everyone to please turn on your cameras for a quick photo opportunity with our speakers.
Okay, Joy, are we ready? Okay. One, two, three, smile. Next page, please. One, two, three, smile. Okay, just keep on smiling because we do not know what page you're in, okay? One, two, three, smile. Page four, one, two, three, smile. Thank you. Oh, there's only three. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, um, I saw earlier, sir, uh, Engineer Kalyao, you raised your hand. Um, do you still have something else to say, sir? Yeah, good afternoon. Again, I'm just wondering why the proposed metropolitan Kagan or the Samis is only from Hazard. Why why is it not well back it indeed Papina extend on Sabaling Hazard? It's only sixteen kilometers from Hazard. Uh, let me respond to that. Uh, there are actually candidate there are candidate uh, uh, LGUs that will be part of the metropolitan area and that includes actually uh, Balingasag and then of course Thank Apil Pud, no? kay Duol Manya Astagulwan, uh, Apil Pud Ana ang Malitbog, Ligbuna uh, those are actually uh, proposed for inclusion and uh, including Talakag so that's uh, something that would happen in the future but right now we already have several uh, LGUs uh, under the metropolitan area but uh, what you have mentioned and what I have uh, added are candidate LGUs for the metropolitan area. Okay. Uh, sorry, you're muted. Uh, can you turn on your microphone, please? Uh, okay, I think it's good already. So uh, before we close, a gentle reminder to everyone, Although we are now on level two, please keep wearing your face mask, okay? Um, I have it here with me actually, so. And especially when around with other people and for those who have not finished their vaccinations, please do so. See you again in our next webinar. Follow, keep on following our chamber in your Facebook for more updates. Uh, we also would like to remind everyone for our disclaimer that the file and its contents in these presentations that we presented here earlier, uh, the file and its contents should not be shared or passed without permission from our chamber and authors. So the presentation contains online sourced images which have copyrights and intellectual property rights. The order chamber and author claims and author disclaims any ownership of these images. Moreover, no copyright infringement is intended. The use of these images serves only as visuals for the discussion of the topic in this forum. So to formally close this activity, we would like to call on Engineer Avalin Kahulugan, Ma'am Ava. In behalf of the Oro Chamber, I'd like to thank our guest uh, speakers, Doc Annabel Abuso, uh, R.D. Myla Carino, Engineer Nonito from the RTA, our reactors, Engineer Kalyao and Engineer Paras, then, of course, our uh, Mr. Our MC, Mr. Gabor. <laughs> and, and also, in closing, this is not the last of the forum that we're going to have for the transport, uh, traffic, and traffic forum. There will be another forum, but I think for the next forum, I would like to encourage that discussion will be more on brainstorming as an offshoot of what we have presented. Because bubura kayong oras natong gihatag sa mga reactors na tuog sa atong mga listeners. So I think that would be the next uh, forum that we're going to have. And of course, uh, I'd like to thank Mike Banyos for uh, having this as a, his project. Of course, I'm always here with you to support you with your project when it comes to transportation. And two things also I'd like to leave to all of us here. It really shows that there is a need to integrate the land use and transport planning. So I think we have to look into it, uh, the city as well as uh, the, the region, to really integrate land use and transport planning. And of course, it is not only the movement of people that is putting us chain in the limited road network in the city, rather the movement of goods from ports and airports 
towards the city and the hinterland. I think this would be the next project or the plan that we should be doing for the city. Again, thank you so much. Thank you everyone, our participants. Thank you for your time. We hope that we have satisfied you with our presentation and looking forward to the next presentation. for inviting us. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Sorry for the overtime. <laughs> I know it's very exciting. So we will have another Nine. venue for One this. One day, para na breakout session na to. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir Kaliao, okay, thank you, Kaliao. Sir Kaliao. Si Ma'am Mayla Dayo, si Ma'am Pei. Very good guy. Thank you. Uh, I actually have two meetings today, so <laughs> I have a sub, I, I have a lesson. Ako <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Ab. Ah, nisunod si Sir Filioni ganina sa Lasal. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. I, I, he also have other meetings, but I think he joined siya sa pag speak na to, Then after that he left, but that could be good because I, I think we could like in the future uh, work with him closely for uh, uh -oh. our future projects oh katong sa simulation kay gamit ka itong dimension ni sir paras about ITS sa ma'am duha ba to then apoy sa UP so kana siya nice ka ayo nako kay natabang para sa city o sa region so LP salamat ka ayo sa imong comment okay dagan pa tay suryahan kag so yes sir wala kayo ah Mag okay, one at time, mag-inaguit na sa kuan. USAID na project. Ay, Ma'am Aileen! Lagi, sir. Lagi, sir. Uh, sir, by the way, ah, Ma'am Aileen! Yeah, mag-inaguit na bata sa amphitheater. Also, ah, mo ba? It will open dit na by the end of the month. Are you oh, home na na, Aileen? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Invite us! Of course. <laughs> of course. Nakaras ka gayaan? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. here on real time. <laughs> <laughs> Maguna ko sa inyo. Maduna yes. ang school. Ato na yeah. ko. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> Hindi ka magdungga si Engineer Kalyao. <laughs> Yeah, okay na ako, ma'am. Salamat ka. Okay. Sige. Oh. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Bye, Abs. Ay, ma'am. Ay, ma'am, Nick. Kamusta <laughs> na? Lagi, namati ko sa inyo. Oh, pati ni Lisa, Nick. Ay, tingali, Abs. Yes, ma'am. Maka, maka, submit mo direct sa JICA. Pwede ba? Pwede. I, I, ano na to for future projects? Oo. Oh, Oo. Oh, oh. oh. Para si mahimuan ng FS. Oo. Yes, ma'am. Ma mahimuan ng FS. Napa man siguro si sa Jaika si ha, katong babae si si Ia. Si Ia. Oh, si Ia. Yes. Oo. Oo, oo, oo. I'll try to contact Ia. Wala naman siguro ay contact, but I'll try to contact her para ma himuan ng FS at itong mga project at mga plans. <laughs> Lagi katong kuan. Katong transit LRT. Oh, LRT. Then, oh, oh. Aro musunod, musunod sa Davao bitaw kay Murag mm -hmm. na na Manila ang Davao nga kuan. FS. Yeah. Sige ma'am, I'll, I'll find a way. Contact na ako si Ia then we could uh, send our proposal. We could show them the, our plans. So I think they would be happy. Oh, kay dako naman nga advantage nga na ay master plan. Mm. Kuan na lang dayon, FS. Pero for that, Murag, iagi gihapon sa NEDA. Oh, NEDA gihapon. Ah, I mean, i-approve sa city. Oh, so, i-approve sa city. <laughs> Waiting for the council <laughs> to approve it. <laughs> Lagi. Oh. Lagi, may kung naapa imong contact dito sa kuan? Sa? Sa Jaika. I think na pa ma'am. Kay Jaika raman ang ga infra spending, di ba? Ang uban oh. technical assistance raman ang uban. Sige lang ma'am, kay I'll talk to Kita ko na ko si Ia, if not then oh, oh, oh. to someone else sa Japanese. Oh. Uh, ang GI set wala wala sila ingon dana, di ba? TA Japan technical assistance. Kay, 
Lahit technical ilang assistance. Small, oh, technical assistance and small project. Na soft ra ba? Oh. Dili na 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 leading to infra, oh, to construction. Oh. Oh. Lagi. 